All right, we are live, guys. Um, man, I'm so excited to be here today with Jimbo. Um, Jimbo, thank you so much for coming out today. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> What's up, man? Uh, not a whole lot. It's I. I mean, I had to work today, <laughs> but now I'm I'm off and and we're here talking. We are here. Yeah. Um, man, I'm so excited. Thank you so much for doing this. Um. We got a bunch of people in chat. Uh, I see Squash and Aroy. He says that he's only here for Jimbo. Um, <laughs> Ray Jate, uh, Mitz Mitsunitu. Mitz. <laughs> um, man, this is awesome. Uh, it's so cool. We we haven't really. This is like our first time actually seeing and talking to each other. Right. So it's really most cool. It, yeah, most of it's always just through text and chats and stuff. Yeah, so. it's like face to chat. <laughs> <laughs> um well we're just gonna jump on in uh we got a bunch of stuff to talk about um mm -hmm. i want to hear about what you've been playing um do you want to start with hollow knight or do you want to start with we happy few uh i, I don't know what do you want to start with those are, i mean those are the two most recent things for me let's um let's start with we happy few because we both played that i've only played a little bit okay. um but i know you've been playing a lot uh and I just want to talk about Hollow Knight a lot too, but let's talk, yeah. let's talk about uh, We Happy Few. Um, yeah, so I guess I've put something like eighteen hours into it now, but I'm still in the first character, so I I don't know how far in we are. But um, I didn't even know that there are multiple characters. Yeah, I think there's three, um, but I, I I don't know how different they are, and I don't know how they're if their stories connect somehow or or, or what. I really don't know a whole lot. Um, but it, it's, it's a weird, it's a tricky game, right? Like it's a weird mm -hmm. game in that, that, that the premise is, is really interesting and, and the environment they built is, is kind of fun to be in. Um, and the story is progressing in such a way where like we're, we're getting a lot of stuff's unfolding and, and it's kind of paced extremely well, but the gameplay around it is just, it feels so flawed to me. Mm. Um, so it's it's hard like so at first it was just kind of like a, a few quirks and stuff here and there that were kind of kind of charming and, and easy to overlook and then later on just kind of felt more fundamentally flawed to where it's like okay uh, i can throw this bottle at this guard and it does nothing but as soon as i try to open the door he wakes up you know yeah like it doesn't doesn't make a whole lot of sense a lot of reminders that you're playing a video game that's not really working properly so I feel like so many games have that problem, um, especially stealth games, where mm. you know it's it's so easy to kind of get around the enemy AI and kind of uh, break the AI. And um, I mean, a lot of games. Like, I feel like, uh, did you ever play Hitman? Well, any of the Hitman games? Uh, a, a while back ago, I can't, I can't remember what they what, which one they were. I don't know if it was Blood Money or. If that was even, I don't remember which one that was, but I didn't play too much of them, no. Because especially the the last Hitman game, Hitman 2016, it was like uh, you could do that with the enemy AI, enemy AI, but it was kind of like it was kind of enjoyable to do that, and it was kind of like they they made fun of it when you could, you mm -hmm. know, get around the AI and kind of make uh, just do something silly and just have fun with it. But it's like We Happy Few is supposed to be so serious and so into it that um i guess maybe that sticks out a little bit more when when that kind of stuff happens yeah i mean it it, it also doesn't seem to take itself seriously sometimes there's a lot of references and, and stuff in it which is interesting but like i don't know it, it definitely takes me out when like <laughs> When weird stuff happens, like I, like when we you sit on a bench and, and almost everybody is around um, looking at you. Oh yeah, <laughs> and like and talking to you and yelling at you, like they're supposed to be a, they're supposed to be pulling you out of this bench, but they aren't. It's just it just it feels it just feels weird. It feels cheap. It feels like we're 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 we've broke the game, mm. um, and it's not it's not. Uh, I don't know. It's different. What do you think about the story? How are you liking the story? Yeah, so the story I feel is by far the strongest part. Um, we have we have a lot of questions that we're asked. We're we're getting little tidbits as we go along, and uh, I don't know. It feels 
it feels rewarding when we get to a, to, to like the next step. And it, and I, I want to keep going. It's like, I kind of like made a promise that we were, um, that we'd kind of just like stick to the story. And so mm-hmm. we, maybe we, we wouldn't get stuck doing other stuff. So I think that's probably the best thing to do when you get in a game like that, where there's so many different ways that you could go around things and so many different side quests and things like that, that, uh, sometimes it's just best just to stick with the story and just, mm-hmm. you know, power through and really try and experience what it has to offer. I agree. I agree. Um, cause I, I like I said, that that's by far the, the, the most enjoyable part of the game. And so it's like, I feel like, if you could just like if you could just focus on that stuff then maybe the other stuff is not is not as bad and and some of some of the parts have been really entertaining as well i mean it's a it's it's funny uh but probably not in the way that the developers meant for it to be so like <laughs> yeah uh, but yeah terrific art style mhm the light the lighting is really good the the colors are great like there's there's a lot graphically i think that that that's really that's really well done um you guys in chat are hilarious <laughs> we're uh uh first of all i want to say thank you guys so much for coming out thank you always for coming out i really appreciate it i know that you're all here just to see jimbo <laughs> um yeah. but i really appreciate the follows i i turn the alerts and things off during the podcast so i hope you guys understand um i try not to have it too distracting when uh when we're doing the podcast because um, I know people are going to listen to it after, and some people may not even actually watch it. They may just listen to it. So um, I, I hope you guys understand. Uh, I really appreciate you guys coming out, though. Who's Jimbo? <laughs> I don't know. A-Rock. I, I, somebody owes A-Rock 10 bucks. You owe A-Rock 10 because bucks? I smiled. I smiled when I saw his message. Oh. <laughs> Did y'all have a bet going on or something? No, he just said he just said he bet ten bucks. Somebody, I, I, I smile. So <laughs> awesome. He wins. Cool. Well, yeah. Um, did you ever play Contrast? Did you play their game that they made before that? I I did not, but I I had a coworker that really really liked it, and I I downloaded it because it was free. I think on PlayStation Plus one one month. Yeah. Um, but I never got around to it. It looked interesting, but it was like one of those things that just. I never, I never like was drawn into it. Just like he, and he always talked about the premise and the and the, the the light dark interactions. I guess is is the shadows and stuff that he told me about. And I said, oh, that's that's neat. But it was never. It always felt kind of like a, like a like a maybe B tier title. And so like I was like, I don't really want to spend time on it. And I yeah, probably, I was I, I was kind of the same way. I was actually looking it up. I looked it up on uh, how long to beat. And it said it's only like three hours, so mm-hmm. I'm I'm interested. I kind of want to go back and check it out. Um, if it's only like two to three hours, then it might be fun to play through it and just see what it's all yeah. about. Um, cool. Well, anything else you want to talk about as far as we happy few? Uh, I think I mean I think that's pretty much it. Like, it's it's flawed but still enjoyable somehow. So I, I mean I guess. I don't know, but for me, it's kind of easy to deal with some of that stuff sometimes, but it hasn't pushed me away completely yet, but we'll see. I want to spend more time on it for sure. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, Yeah, I mean, I've been playing through it too. Uh, I've only played through just a tiny, tiny bit. I think I played like four hours the other day, Um, and I didn't really have, I didn't really run into as many um instances of the weird ai or you know anything like you were talking about but i could definitely see how there could be some some things Mm -hmm. um that could be a little just take you out of the game um right so i can see how that could go or get worse the more i go into it but so far i really like it i really like the premise and i really like the uh the story um at the very first, so you were choosing uh, like whether to, to censor or whether to allow stuff to go through. Did you did you have any like rhyme or reason that you were going for that, or did you just no do random I, stuff? I, 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 yeah, I, I, mean, I don't know that I actually think it really mattered at all. Like I, I don't think it did thing. either. Yeah, um, I don't even know what you're supposed to do. Like it didn't seem like there was any reason. Yeah, to it, it didn't seem like there was a right or wrong way. It just 
it was interesting. I I wish that uh like it would it would be really cool if like 10 or 15 hours into the game that actually did have some impact on your decisions, right. but I kind of doubt that it does. Um cool. Well, that's we happy few. Um <laughs> Yeah, I I uh, I know you'll still be playing through some more of it. I hope to play through some more of it eventually, uh, but man, there's so many games. Yeah. Um, I'll I'll just kind of mention really quick. I've been playing through, of course, Final Fantasy X. Uh, I've been playing through that for a long time. Uh, I still really enjoy that. I think I'm getting close to the end. Um, have you ever played any Final Fantasy games? Are you a Final uh, Fantasy fan? I am. An I FFF? have played. I play the best Final Fantasy game ever, also known as Lost Odyssey, even though it's not technically a Final <laughs> Fantasy game. No, uh, I have played a little bit. I actually have never beaten one, though, but really? I've played a lot of them in the past. Um, but I was, I was actually told that t- uh, I should play 10 after playing Lost Odyssey because um, there's supposedly a lot of similarities between the two, I guess, in pacing and, and, and s- stuff like that. So Really? That's interesting. Is uh, Lost Odyssey, is it turn-based combat? It is, but it has um, it has a a mechanic. I, I don't know if you ever played the Shadow Hearts game on, on PlayStation Two. It's the it's that same developer. They have like a they have a timing mechanic. Where it's, it's like a ring that kind of closes down, and you hold your trigger, and then you let go at the right time. So it's a little bit more involved. And I like those types of systems where it's not literally just like pick something. Like Super Mario RPG does it too, where you you hop on something and then you you know you smash it again or whatever. I like those types of turn-based combat mechanics because it keeps you a little bit more involved. But um, have you ever played a Persona game? Uh, again, I have dabbled in them, but I, I so this is this is a problem with me. How this is why <laughs> one of the reasons why I started streaming is because I have a severe problem about finishing games. And that was very um, similar for me. So, uh, like, there's 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 tons of games that I I would like to play, and I I like to play. Wish I would have finished in the past, but just like finding that motivation to to finish was just not always there. So, um, Andershroom is saying, would you consider this as a contender for best game of 2018? Are you talking about uh, We Happy Few? I I don't think I would consider it in mm. best game of 2018, especially when we have God of War. <laughs> Yeah. And also, I saw with uh, Mr. Gone, he asked a rating of out of 10. I would say wait out of 10. I definitely think <laughs> uh, this is like either like a sale game or like a fixed game. Uh, yeah. Ab- absolutely. Yeah. It seems like um, it seems like the, de- the developers are are still working on it. Um, I think they have already released at least one patch, haven't they? Yeah, supposedly though it made things certain things worse. I think there's oh, a big no. one coming at the end of the week, though. Supposedly, I'm I, I'm not sure. I can't confirm that, but I think that's what I heard. Gotcha. Um, cool. Well, I'll let's see. I'll mention really quickly. I want to. I think I want to save Hollow Knight because I want to talk about that a lot too. Okay. Um, yeah. I played a little bit of Diablo three. I started a new hardcore run. Um, just because. I I haven't played Diablo 3 in quite a while, but I used to play it like every season, just run through a character, and uh, mm-hmm. I enjoy that. That's my kind of, uh, you know, late at night, just play a few hours of that after a day at work or something like that. Um, it's a it's still a fun game. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, Blizzard, and apparently they have multiple Diablo projects um, uh, upcoming, so hopefully diablo 4 but probably Mm. like diablo 3 on switch or something like that which would (laughs) be cool (laughs) um we happy few we already talked about that um let's see i'll 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 go over just really briefly death's gambit um i started playing this this game released today um this game has been it was announced i don't know like three or four years ago i feel like and i immediately put it on my wish list because it was a uh, kind of touting itself as a 2D Dark Souls like game, right? Which I'm a huge, huge, huge <laughs> Dark Souls fan, <laughs> um, and I know everybody like you say this game is like Dark Souls. Dark Souls means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. For me personally, I love the the stamina based combat. So you know, like you have 
every action costs stamina. If you if you swing a weapon, it costs stamina. If you roll, it costs stamina. If you dodge, it costs stamina. So this is a game that um, is very similar in a lot of ways. Um, very similar in its storytelling um, in that it's very subtle and like every item you pick up has uh, descriptions that you have to read to kind of get lore about the story. Mm-hmm. Um, it seems to be kind of similar in its uh, its level design where you'll run through levels and you'll get lost and then like you'll open up a a um, a a door and you'll come back and you're like, oh, this just wrapped all the way around and that's really cool. Um, uh, very, very similar in insanely difficult bosses that you have to beat. Yeah. And, um, it, for me, at least it, it is very, very challenging. It's probably not quite as challenging to some people. I, I'm terrible at Dark Souls, Jimbo. I'll, I'll be glad, I'll be happy to admit that, but there's something about these games that, man, it's just so satisfying. And I think mm-hmm. you are kind of the same way, especially like with Hollow Knight that, it's so difficult, but when you finally beat that boss that you've been, you know, fighting for two hours, it's just so satisfying. Um, and I just love those kind of games. But yeah, I've I've only put about three to four hours into it, so I feel like I've got a lot more to go on that, and I look forward to getting back into that. Now I watched you play some today, and it looked really good. But how did how did it feel? Was it tight? Like did, did the controls feel pretty sharp? Or it felt really good. the The biggest problem for me is I've been playing so many different games um, across so many different systems that I get so confused on the buttons because, yeah. like on this one, uh, B B is dodge, but there's a, a very similar game called Salt and Sanctuary. Um, that's another tremendous game that I would highly recommend. Um, that's another kind of 2d dark souls like game. And the dodge on that is right trigger. And so I just like have instinctively been hitting right trigger to dodge. Um, and so it's taking me a a while to figure to, you know, get my, my mind adjusted for that. Right. Um, but yeah, everything else feels pretty good. There's, there's a lot of things in these types of games that, feel clunky at first but it's because you don't really understand the systems um you know like especially if you if you're out of stamina and you're like trying to attack you're like why am i not attacking and then you look up and you're like oh i'm out of stamina um but yeah (laughs) i uh i don't know if it's quite as tight feeling as hollow knight because hollow knight Mm -hmm. man it's just so good it feels so good yeah but um, it feels pretty good overall. There's there's different classes that you can pick. I, I chose the soldier, which is kind of a heavy hitter. He swings a great sword. So he's a little bit slower, maybe, I'm, I'm guessing, um, than some of the other ones. Um, I, I saw someone else playing. I don't know what it was, but he was playing with daggers, and it looked like he was a lot faster. No, that's, um, I think that's, that's what I would pick, probably, for starters. That's what you would pick? Yeah, that's what I picked my first Dark Souls playthrough, and it was a disaster. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The good thing about Dark Souls is uh, your starting class really doesn't matter. You can kind of turn it into whatever you want. Yeah, I was like, oh, this is gonna be awesome, and I was like, yeah, this is not gonna work. A few hours into that, I realized that it wasn't for me anyway. Not to say that you can't complete that with whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really like that game. Um, I can't wait to continue it. I don't know when I'm gonna continue it because so many games but uh, right. it was a lot of fun um let's see i'm trying to catch up on chat you guys are going so fast i don't know how you do it jimbo with so many people in chat it's, it's rough sometimes yeah uh timeless what what game did he play um we so we've talked about we happy few uh death's gambit diablo 3 and final fantasy 10 is what we've been talking about um fat rolls are not the best mitts i don't know what you're talking about (laughs) um seven total classes in uh death's gambit yeah that sounds right all right so let's talk about hollow knight yes let's let's, (laughs) please so well go ahead You, you just tell me whatever you want to tell me about hollow knight um well okay first of all first of all i want to say any anybody that's on the fence about hollow knight like i feel like the 15 dollar price point is absolutely the most ridiculously good value in video games right now like 
I, I couldn't believe I, I got it on sale for 10. I think I talked to you about this. I, yeah. I got it on sale for 10. I put 40 hours into that game and beat it at 78% <laughs> completion, which puts it around 25 cents an hour for that game, which is absolutely absurd. Uh, the kind of value that you can get from it. And like, it's still not even done. I know um, they're still releasing DLC and it's completely free. Right. So it's bizarre. Yeah, we, and, and it's crazy because, and I already like, as soon as I was done with it, even after spending 40, 40 hours, like I, I, I wanted, I missed, I missed the game. Like I wanted to go back and complete it. I wanted to go back and do other things. There was bosses that I hadn't done. There was grubs I didn't, I hadn't found. And like, and then at the same time, it's like, oh, it's also on the switch. And it's like, well, I, I want to start a game there and I can just take that with me on, on trips. I can have like two games going on at once and like replay the game like on like a mobile, um, like even though it's the same version, just play it like on, on mobile. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's one of those games where like I, I had put off getting it because it's like, I saw this, I saw it and it's like, well, this looks good, but maybe it's not really th- what I want to play right now. But yeah. like, as soon as like I got in, it was just like, okay, this is exactly what I want to play right now. And I just didn't want to stop. It was, it's, it's exactly my type of game. Um, I don't know if you, if you like played Metroidvania games in the past, like I loved the old Castlevania games, like Symphony of the Night, and then all the, the, the GBA and DS games, like Aria of Sorrow, Dawn of Sorrow. Uh, I loved those, like I, I ate those up. Um, so I don't know if that's like, if you have an experience with those two. And of course, I, Metroid as well. Yeah, I don't. Um, I So I, I grew up playing PC games um, and I actually kind of got into gaming pretty late in my life. I didn't really get into gaming like, you know, what I would consider kind of hardcore gaming until like the early kind of mid 2000s. Um, mm-hmm. And I never had, sadly, I never had a Nintendo console when I was growing up. I never had a Sega or anything like that. So the first games that I started playing were like Call of Duty, the like the original Call of Duty on PC and uh, like the Tom Clancy Rainbow Six games and, um, you know, mostly 3D uh, type games. And so I just never really got into those um uh castlevania metroid type games mm-hmm. um i'm trying to remember like what my first it may have actually been salt and sanctuary which actually was not that long ago i think it came out in like 2015 um was like my first really hardcore metroidvania and really the main reason that i got into that is because it was similar to dark souls and i fell in love with those games but yeah hollow knight I bought Hollow Knight, um, I think when it first came out last year, and I put about three hours into it, and I was like, oh, this is good, but I, I don't know, it was just maybe that time of the year or that time that I was playing it, I just really didn't, it really didn't grab me right away. Mm-hmm. Um, but when it released on Switch uh, a month ago, or however long it was, I picked it up on that, and I was like, oh, maybe I'll enjoy it on the Switch, and uh, that I don't think that that was like all of a sudden made me made me enjoy the game, but that definitely did help me because I could just like lay in bed and play a couple hours at night or, you know, put it on the dock and play here um, yeah. on the big screen. It's just really nice to do that. But yeah, I, man, I got so engrossed in that game and just the, I love, love, love the exploration of it um, and just going through areas and seeing like, Oh, there's a there's a jump there, but I can't quite get to it. So I know that I'm going to get an ability later on to come back and get to that. And Mm -hmm. you go through areas multiple times. And I know that this is like standard Metroidvania, but Mm -hmm. um, but again, like I had never really played anything like that. Not not many things like that. So I think I enjoyed it even more for that reason. Um, The bosses are just so good. Um, The the handling is super, super, super tight. Feels really, really good. Um, is there anything that you don't like about the game? <laughs> um, the the only thing that I, I, I just maybe like some small criticisms. Like I felt like I I kind of I, th- I think I talked with the slunks about this a little bit. Is I kind of wish you got the dash maybe just a little bit earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, and I kind of wish the nail arts were a little bit more. Um, I I guess well, there's a couple abilities that just didn't feel necessary. Like I think I don't didn't get the Wraith's ability, which is the up B uh attack until like kind of the end. And I never really 
found a use for it. Like, I would yeah, much rather use... there are a lot of abilities, and yeah. I don't think anybody uses all of them, um, at least their first play- playthrough. Right. Um, Mr. Gon, though, did ask about the rough uh, lore outline, I guess, for the story, and I, I, I can't really say, because I feel like you kind of had to discover it. I feel like you, you might even need to 100% it in order to understand fully what's going on. Yeah. I've uh, I think it's at starters like there's there's some kind of corruption that that happened uh, to 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 this little underground thing and you you kind of have to go in and purge it and there was a there was a something that was sealed it before and you have to fight it and then you become sealed you know I don't know, it's kind of a a weird cyclic type thing it seems like but I'm not sure exactly because I don't think we've seen the true ending. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very subtle storytelling. Um, it's definitely not something that just like lays out exactly what's going on, which I like. But at the same time, it is very kind of complicated to uh, take all the story in. Um, I, I do feel like you were saying like you really would need to 100% it and probably play it through multiple times to fully get everything out of it. Um, and it's kind of like a Souls game too, I think, where you talk about like you have to read item mm-hmm. description. There's a journal. And I don't. We didn't read all the the entries in the journal for the different um, enemies that we fought. So I think there's like a lot in there still to be discovered, which is even more exciting. Like um, because you you wouldn't think a game like that would would be really heavy on stuff, and maybe it's not like super engrossing. But I think the way that they maybe they know that, and the, but they the way they let you find it is is part of the fun you know it's yeah like you get a little tidbit here you get a little i don't know and i think there is actually a lot i think a lot of the chat when i was playing was telling me like you know there's a really cool story to this boss that you find out later and i just i didn't know how but it's like yeah. oh, i gotta i want to find out like why is this boss here what's what's going on and but i i think you really have to be engrossed in it in order to, to get all that stuff how many deaths? How many deaths was it? <laughs> 162 for me. Uh, I, I feel like that's actually really good. I, I feel like I didn't keep count of my deaths, but it had to have been like 500. <laughs> it, yeah. was, it was so many. But that um, doesn't include a lot of other, like, I mean, we didn't count dream deaths. And of course, we didn't do like the, the third Coliseum. Uh, we didn't do a couple of the optional bosses. Uh, I mean, there's there's a still a lot that you can do. I think that's the other cool thing is like it's very nonlinear. You can skip entire sections that are not yeah. necessary. You can do stuff somewhat out of order. Uh, if you don't, but if you don't have certain abilities, obviously you can't do parts of some areas. Um, that there's yeah, and squash squash guess one sixty three. <laughs> so he won he won our little giveaway. Uh, I can't believe he was so close. Um, I knew it was going to be over a hundred because also like you, I think I I hadn't played a game like that in a long time. So I had a pretty steep learning curve at the beginning to kind of remember how to play that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. and to get timing down and to get like a handle on stuff. And and it's one of those things like it's really fun to improve on. And I think I told you like after, like I went back to Cuphead and like started a couple bosses in Cuphead and it's just like, Oh man, this is like, this is kind of a piece of cake right now. Like I feel like I'm on, you know, I feel like I'm dodging, I'm reading, like, I don't know. It's, it's definitely rewarding game. For sure. I will say, um, you know, you were talking about like, you felt like it took a little too long to get like the, the, uh, the, what is it? The slash, well, the dash, ability, the like dash the ability, move, the movement stuff, basically. Yeah. Um, I started a new playthrough, and like I was able to get to the air, the area where you get that in like an hour. <laughs> yeah. Because I knew where to go, you know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think definitely part of it. Um, your first playthrough, you know, you spend so long in just that one little area at first, just slowly mm-hmm. slowly un- uncovering areas and plus you're like always going back to the bench because you're worried about losing all your stuff and everything like that so right. um yeah i think on your second playthrough it'll definitely go a whole lot faster and you'll be surprised uh at how fast you get some of the abilities yeah i think you're right what did you say is there anything you didn't like about it mm, i think yeah i mean 
I don't think that this is really a negative, but just kind of like you were saying, I really didn't use a lot of the abilities or not a lot of the abilities, but some of the abilities, um, maybe there was just a little bit too much of that, that kind of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. but that's not really a negative. I mean, it's like, it's there if you want to use it. Um, right. and if you don't want to use it then you know, no problem. Um, do you know if you even got into any of the DLC? Cause I, I don't even know if I got into any of the DLC. I don't know either because I don't I don't know um I don't know I don't know what they added exactly. So yeah. I'm not sure what 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 was DLC and what, and what wasn't. Um, I wasn't either. And the way I understand it is it's just kind of integrated into the game that it may be like right. you know just a, a hidden wall that you find and opens up a new area or something like that. Um awesome. Well, anything else yeah. you want to say about Hollow Knight? Well, I Other guess than we didn't even, it's a great game. Go buy it. Yeah. <laughs> well, we didn't even we didn't even like touch on. Uh oh. Jimbo is, is okay. Oh. <laughs> you you froze for a second. Oh no. You're good now. Okay, hold on. Am I? I don't know. Is that my internet? It it froze just for a second. You're good okay. now though. <laughs> um. Oh, I see. I see Discord. Uh. Okay. No. I, the the charm system we didn't talk touch on that oh like, yeah it, it's pretty in depth and like having certain uh combinations of charms that, that can give you certain advantages and, and and synergize well together um i thought was was really interesting and not something that i was expecting i guess like because most of the time in those games it's like like a two item combo or something like that and it's like okay you have you have these two two things you can use but um I don't know. I thought that was I thought that was a welcome depth to the game that that I uh, I was pleasantly surprised by. Yeah, that was really nice. How um, so? For anybody that hasn't played it, you have um, um, you don't really have like stats or anything like that. You don't really have like a level or anything. But you find charms as you go throughout the game, and these charms will give you. Um, like you, you have a charm that will uh, show you where you are on the map and you have a charm that will make you swing a little bit faster and you have a charm that will make you dash a little bit faster or make you heal, heal a little bit faster. And I don't know, there's like, what, 25, 30 charms? There's a lot of them. Yeah, something like that. Um, and so you can you can customize how you want to play. And uh, for for what I did... I kind of had like once you get a lot of them, you kind of have like an, an exploration layout, um, you know, that like you have a, a charm that will give you more geo, which the geo is like the currency for killing enemies. Um, so you can just like put on your charms that you want while you're, you're exploring. And then you when you get to a boss, you may have you may want to swap those out and get uh, something that gives you the ability to heal a little bit faster or the ability to hit a little bit harder or something like that. So it's really cool how you can customize that. 45 Agreed. charms, Panda, Tr Panda Shroom says. Yeah. Very cool. That's crazy. Yeah, that, man, such a great game. I don't know, is it available on Xbox? Or is it... Um, I th actually, I, th I don't... I don't know if it's available on PS4 and Xbox. Is it only PC and Switch? Uh, I don't. I don't know actually. Let me look it up. Okay. Squash has PC and Switch only. Man, that's too bad. Uh, yeah, it's available on Linux. <laughs> <laughs> All you Red Hat users, <laughs> you're in luck. Yep. Um. I wonder if they have any plans for bringing that to other platforms. Um, I don't think, I think that this is their first game that they've made. Uh, Team Cherry, I think it is. Mm -hmm. But I'm really blown away by the dedication that they have put into their game. <laughs> Plus they're Australian, that's cool. All right, well, anything else you want to say about Hollow Knight? Other than it's a great game. Yeah, as you guys should buy it and play it and have fun. <laughs> uh, Panda Shroom said they would make some more, but it would be paid. Oh, for the uh, DLC? 
that's fine. It's like it's one of those. I feel like they're, they're yeah. one of those developers that like you would happily give them more money right. if they gave you the opportunity to. Like I would buy every single piece of DLC that they put out. <laughs> I know. Like this is just because I feel like I, I'm so I was so I got so much value out of it. You know. I know. I feel guilty for only paying fifteen dollars. <laughs> right. And you only pay ten. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm, a, I'm the worst. Um. Well, that's awesome. Any other games you want to talk about since you've been playing or anything else before we move on to the news? Nope, I'm ready. Awesome. Um, so we're going to talk just a little bit about the news. Um, Red Dead Redemption 2 is a <laughs> game that's coming out. <laughs> um, it's kind of crazy that we haven't seen any gameplay of this game uh, until just now. And this game comes out in is it october october 26th i think yeah i guess so or is i yeah i think it's in october um anyway uh red dead redemption 2 they finally showed off their gameplay have you watched any of the gameplay i did watch the the gameplay trailer i haven't watched it jimbo i want to go into this game totally blind i don't want to know anything about it i i saw the initial reveal trailer um and that's all i wanted to see i was like okay i'm sold (laughs) yeah but i've i've started doing that more and more i've tried to start doing that it's really tough to do but i feel like i i did this for horizon zero dawn um I saw the initial reveal for that and I was like, this looks really cool. I think I'm just going to uh, shield myself from viewing any other media about this and go in just totally blind. And it was like one of the greatest experiences ever. Um, uh, Just going in there and just experiencing that world, not knowing anything about it, not knowing anything about the story. So I want to do the same thing for Red Dead Redemption 2, but... um, I haven't played the the original Red Dead Redemption. Uh, have you played you it? No, I have. Uh, that was that was one of my favorite games on the 360. Uh, really, for sure. Uh, yeah, it was. So uh, I was a big I was a big kind of open world sandbox game with. I, I really liked Rockstar's games. Uh, Grand Theft Auto Four was actually one of my favorite. I thought it had a really really strong story. And I really, love GTA Four. Um, and Red Dead Redemption was was similar to that to me, but in a in a Western setting, which is one of my favorites. Western movies are some of my favorite movies of all time. Um, Once upon a time, You're in the such West, a Texan. I, I know, right? Uh, John Wayne with the Searchers and and uh, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Like these are these are classic movies that the uh, the Man with No Name trilogy. Like I i adore all of those things i I just eat them up so like being in one of those worlds and being uh mr marshton and like being able to do that stuff was like i don't know like that was exactly what i wanted and so like red dead redemption 2 uh, i i saw that trailer and it was just like it was enough i didn't i didn't listen too much of it but um the the gameplay trailer yeah, like because they they're t- it's actually like it's one of those typical rock star things where they have like a voiceover and they they explain like what's going on. It wasn't like a, it's not like a, a theatrical or like a, like kind of trailer and stuff. They literally tell you like this is what you'll be doing. Oh, interesting. This is what this is, and so like I didn't I didn't listen to too much of that stuff. I just wanted to see what and, and there's there are there are some things in there that they talk about that I think um, kind of like what Stealth says it, it kind of maybe what people are a little wary of like i don't know like, there's some stuff i don't want to tell you if you don't want to know because um you want to go in blind but um i i don't know i think i i'm excited i think i think it's going to be great and i think i'm going to put a bunch of hours into it and it looked great cool do you think um how necessary do you think it's going to be for me to play red dead redemption uh personally i think it's gonna be very necessary um mainly because it is a prequel yeah. um uh and i think i think the correct order to play prequels is always to see the original or, or play the original first um but that's me it's me personally um so like i don't know i i would i would see if you could fit in a little bit of that. It, it's a big game though that's the problem i know um, there's there's a lot to it and um I don't know. I 
it might not be completely necessary. You, I'm sure you could go in and 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 enjoy it enough and like kind of and then discover some stuff about it. But I'm really excited about it. I, I think I'll probably do like a little refresher um, before before playing two. I don't I don't think I'm gonna replay the first one though. It's just it's it's a it's an ordeal. Um, yeah. I man, it's tough because I really want to play it, but I only have it on the PS3, and it's pretty janky on the PS3. Like yeah runs not great and doesn't look terrific um yeah i don't know we'll see i i've been debating whether to buy an xbox and and literally the only reason i would buy an xbox one is to play like the backwards compatible stuff because mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I, I think that's fair <laughs> i know the uh but i i saw some gameplay of red dead redemption on the xbox one and it looks amazing like they've got it running at 1080p and a solid mm-hmm. frame rate a solid 30 frames per second um which is better than the 20 it runs on ps3 yeah no i i recommend it and then you can also play lost odyssey so it's, it's a win-win <laughs> i've got to play that game <laughs> um, I've got to get it somehow. All right. Well, moving on. Um, Discord. You've heard of Discord, right? I've, I've heard of it. Yeah. <laughs> Discord <laughs> is launching its own uh, curated game store. Um, I thought this was pretty interesting. Um, basically, they're, they're, it seems like Discord is trying to be Steam, and Steam is now trying to be Discord. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um but I think Discord is in a really good position to start doing this, to start selling games. Uh, they have, it's probably scary how much data they have on us right now <laughs> as far as yeah. the uh, kind of games that we play and the kind of games that we enjoy. So, um, you know, I'm I'm down for more competition in that market. Uh, I don't know how you feel on that, but um, I think it could be interesting. Yeah, I'm always torn with this stuff because I feel like Steam is such a good centralized. I mean, it's, I hesitate to say good, but it is a it is a core centralized system to to go through all this stuff. And whenever we start adding things, like I like dedicated dedicated components. Like I I don't mind using Discord for voice, you know, Steam for the launcher, uh, you know, Twitch for streaming. It's just when when everyone starts to do their own thing, it's like I don't want to, like I don't have any of the Twitch Prime free games because i don't really want to have the twitch prime launcher you know like i don't want to have to go through that uh i don't want to have to do that kind of thing and if i have to use a discord launcher if i had to you know i don't know i just i'm hesitant to jump into that stuff i really just want steam uh, or like you know i I guess a blizzard launcher or you know epic launcher origin you play (laughs) (laughs) i mean you you kind of have to deal with it with those games if it's exclusive but if it's on steam it's like that's that's where i want to get it so yeah it's um, tough i mean because i have like i don't know like 500 600 games on steam and it is so nice to just have them all centrally located and just have them all in one place um i mean you can add you know you can add those games like non-steam games into your steam library and launch them from steam right but i'm pretty sure you still have to have the launcher open for it to work um I don't know. I I personally don't mind it. I don't mind having you know you play an origin and uh, the Twitch launcher and Blizzard and yeah. We're gonna have to get uh, the Bethesda launcher for Fallout seventy six. I don't know. I didn't add yeah. that in here, but I don't know if you saw that. It's gonna be exclusive to the Bethesda uh, launcher. Yeah. I think that did they announce it at the QuakeCon conference? They had oh, a, that may have been they where they a... announced that at. Yeah. A quick look thing or they had some new stuff come from there so yeah but i don't know it's tough because you know you don't really want steam to have control of everything but at the same time they do they do a pretty good job at collecting all of your stuff and putting it in one place and making it easy to organize and keep everything updated you remember when we used to have to like update games like download <laughs> the, the updates for games and you had all these different versions for games and you used to have to go to like websites to find the correct version to download it and everything. Yeah. I I'm old, Hal. I remember all of that. <laughs> <laughs> um 
All right, Blizzard, uh, we, we mentioned this earlier. Uh, Blizzard says that they're working on multiple Diablo projects. Um, are you a Diablo fan at all? You ever play any of the Diablo games? I am, actually. I, I've, I've not played Diablo 3 in a while, but I grew up playing Diablo 1 with my brother uh, when I think I was about in junior high, and then we played Diablo 2. And I played a lot of Diablo 3 and Reaper of Souls, but I kind of actually stopped uh, after Loot loot 2.0 and right about when season started coming out i did a couple of them um but then i just i like kind of like you it's like it's kind of like a good unwind game for me like you just come home and you kill a bunch of things and see a bunch of numbers pop up yeah but um if i don't i don't always have time for those kinds of things so i i haven't really played too much of that stuff lately it's the perfect podcast game to watch a watch slash listen to a podcast and just kill a bunch of demons and stuff like that Mm -hmm. um yeah that's funny i actually didn't get into diablo at all like diablo i'd never played diablo one or two and didn't play diablo three until um pretty recently like a couple of years ago is when i first got into it um and i've had a blast with it um but i can definitely see how it's getting old and i hope that we get something new um Right, man. I would love. They're never going to do this, but I would love for them to do like something completely different, like what they did with God of War compared to the previous ones. You know, just completely change it up. Like, give me a third person Diablo mm-hmm. or something like that. Um, you know, give me like a really intriguing, in depth story or something like that. Uh, but I, I really don't see them doing that. I think they're going to stick to the the, the similar formula. formula that they have. Yeah. Um, also you guys in chat, I I hope that you don't feel like we're ignoring you. (laughs) I'm trying to read everything. Um, I, I appreciate you guys so much for being here and I know Jimbo does too. Uh, it means so much. It's really cool. I will have like a little section at the end where we do some questions, um, that Jimbo has collected from some of you guys. And, uh, during that time also, you guys are welcome to post any, um, uh, questions or topics or anything you want us to talk about. And uh, we'll we'll just go crazy. <laughs> I'm watching you, Brian. All right. Uh, let's see. Moving on. Um, oh, speaking of God of War, God of War is getting a big patch on uh, August 20th, which is like a week from now. Uh, okay. That's going to get New Game Plus. Um, it's got, uh, let's see... It's got some bullet points here. Relive, relive the journey with Kratos and uh, Atreus, or Atreus. I think that's how you say it. Um, test your skills with higher level enemies. Unique uh, new game plus mode. Uh, that's really cool. I love when games do that uh, yeah. when they add a new game plus mode. Even though I've, ne- I don't think I've ever completed. Well, maybe one Dark Souls one run, but I've never been a big new game plus guy. But I. I like them. I, I used to I used to play I think Resident Evil 4 was like kind of the first one game that I like played multiple times because of a new game plus because you just kept unlocking things and kept kind of doing new things and picked them up but unfortunately God of War is my great shame right now because I, I have not finished it <laughs> and uh, I played it like a couple hours absolutely fell in love with it but it's like it's one of those things that I really want to play off stream but finding time to play games off stream is extremely difficult and um my wife my wife has actually played through it and she she rubs it in my face every really? time because she's <laughs> yeah she's just like you need to play it it's so good and she keeps telling me she's just like it's hard for her because she wants she can't be around me and because she just wants to talk about it so much even still like she beat it like a couple months ago. yeah like she and i know i know that game is exactly kind of what i want from a video game too so it's just like it's really difficult for me, so I, don't, I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do yet. So, but I I would love to go through it and then go through a new game plus. I really like that stuff. Um, yeah, man, I I can't wait for you to play it either, just so we can talk about <laughs> it. It's it's so good. Um, man, game of, game of the year, uh, kind of like without quite like even without playing like Red Dead Redemption Two or something else, like you just kind of have a, an inkling that it's already just like it's just up there for you. I mean, I hate to say that, you know, like at this point, I want to call it game of the year, but I'll say this, like everything I've played this year, I don't think has even come close to 
sure. the level that this game is at. I think um, you know Red Dead Redemption Two may give it a run, but for me personally, I think it's going to be really difficult to beat uh, this story that they've created. Um, and I'm somebody that has not even played the previous games. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Yeah. I, I can't wait to see what Red Dead, Red, Red Dead Redemption 2 has in store. I hope it gives us, gives it a run for its money. I'm sure s- lots of people will uh, enjoy Red Dead Redemption 2, and I hope that I do too. But mm-hmm. I think it's going to be tough for me to find anything better than God of War this year. It's also interesting because I feel like I feel like God of War has a little bit of a unique advantage because it, it feels like a more focused and contained environment and story even though i know that there's some open stuff to it but like kind of like how like horizon felt like horizon has a pretty big open map but it also has a very clear guide almost all times and then you look at something like skyrim where it's it's much more open and i feel Mm -hmm. like red dead redemption is gonna have a much more open approach to a lot of this stuff and i feel like it's easier to kind of lose focus on those games and when you have something like out of war like it just it just when it's more focused, I feel like the quality can be can be like kind of tweaked just a little bit. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um real quick, going back to Red Dead, um, are you at all worried about like the online stuff and all the microtransactions that you know are gonna come and the the horse cards and <laughs> whatever is gonna be in there? Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things you always worry about, but it's like I feel like I feel like there's nothing that we can do about it. Like, I mean, they always talk about voting with your wallet, but I feel like they're always going to put that in because some some board members always going to ask for it or, you know, they're always going to have some kind of bottom line that they want to reach with it. So it's just like, I don't know. I just, I, I that stuff doesn't really bother me because it's just like, I'm just, I'm not going to buy it, you know? And if I really, really like the game and I want to support them for some reason, like that's an option, but it's just like, I don't know. So uh, you played GTA 5, I'm assuming, right? Uh, I have not. I actually have. I played only a short amount of it. Oh, I really? Stopped, I stopped after four. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, my next question won't apply then. I was going to ask <laughs> if you had if you had played any of the online uh, GTA online. Um, I guess what I was going to say is, so GTA Five originally, uh, like I don't know if the the devs ever confirmed this, but they it it sounded like they originally had plans for single player DLC, which personally that's the thing that I care about the most, right. um, is you know the really good single player portion, and it seems like um, that was put on the back burner for GTA Online, um, and eventually that was just like pushed off and just never looked at again and all of that stuff was canceled for single player DLC just for the online stuff because, you know, the online is just making them tons and tons and tons of money. Um, it's kind of insane how much money that is making them. Um, but I guess my question is like, if um, I'm assuming you're, you're primarily going to be playing red dead for the the single player portion, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So would you be upset if, uh, if like they, they had, single player DLC plan for this but they put it aside because they wanted to focus more on the the online portion. I mean absolutely. Like I I get bummed out with that stuff because there's so many good single player single single player stories to tell in those environments. Like I feel like and we cuz we've seen them and, and GT, GTA 4 did it with like what the Ballad of, Ballad of Gay Tony yeah. and then the the biker DLC like I mean it's just you want to spend more time in those worlds with with new characters or characters that you ran across um and I feel like a game like Red Dead Redemption is the perfect um like platform for it because you're going to come across some cool side characters that maybe you want to dive into and I mean I like I like playing multiplayer games and I like but I just there's there's not as much depth it's it's a, it's a, it's a completely different experience it's a social kind of activity that like i feel i don't know is like when you it's completely different than something that you want to do single player uh and i don't know when 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 they do do things in favor of that stuff it, it does kind of it just bums me out i can't, i don't get outraged or anything which is it's just i don't know i am outraged <laughs> <laughs> um do you ever play uh watch dogs 2 i did not know 
that had to me i didn't the, the game was okay but that had one of the coolest online components i thought of of a game like that uh mm-hmm. of an of kind of a gta style game you were so you were always online um and people could invade you um and so like you could be going it, this would never happen during like a story mission but you could be uh driving around um you know just doing a side quest or something like that and somebody could invade you and basically like hack you and yeah. they would come into your game world and you had to try and find them uh if you didn't find them then they would steal like however much money you had on you at that particular point and so it was a really cool um it, it sounds like it would get really annoying um and i guess sometimes it was but again like it would never happen during uh you know like the story missions or anything like that it was just kind of when you were in free roam um but i really liked how they did multiplayer with that uh i don't think that would really work for red dead redemption 2 uh mm-hmm. for like a, an old western but definitely like a gta game i think would be cool like that yeah, I, the original Red Dead Redemption actually had a small multiplayer component that was basically uh, a, a weird co-op or competitive mission-based structure thing where like, you could team up with your friends and kill a bunch of people at this mission and do some stuff. And it, it was it kind of like, it felt like the very beginnings of something that the GTA Online would have built on, uh, just like a much bigger world. And I actually spent a a small amount of time with it because it's basically like you could play with your friends. You could even do team deathmatch and like weird stuff like that. But it, it definitely felt, I mean, it was definitely a, a, a secondary or even tertiary kind of appeal to the, uh, to the main story based game. Are you going to be playing uh red dead redemption Two battle Royale? <laughs> no, no, probably not. Dude, you don't think that's going to be fun? Like riding on your horses and a hundred people on horses <laughs> all coming in and killing everybody with your thirty alt six and uh, no, I, no, <laughs> it's just it's just not for me. All right, <laughs> sorry to disappoint you, Hal. You no, I'm not going to play it either. <laughs> um, all right. Well, moving on. Uh, we we spoke briefly about QuakeCon. Um, I threw this in here just kind of last minute because QuakeCon was last week. Um, mm-hmm. There's some pretty big things going on. Um, mainly, they showed off uh, the new Doom, the new Doom mm-hmm. Eternal mm-hmm. gameplay. Which, again, I'm going into this totally blind. I haven't watched any gameplay. Oh, no, <laughs> you make this so hard to talk about. Hal. No, no, feel free to talk about it. You can talk all you want about it because I mean I know essentially what it's going to be. Like I played Doom 2016. You just recently played Doom 2016. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. I know you loved it. I absolutely loved uh, this game, uh, Doom 2016, and I'm sure I'm going to love the next one. I I played every Doom all the way back to the original one. Mm-hmm. and uh i've loved them all i even loved doom 3 i know a lot of people didn't love doom 3 i i did too actually yeah, yeah um i mean it was a very different game like it it was it was a, a horror game you know it was mm-hmm. scary and i still love that game to this gate to this day um but yeah they showed off doom eternal um uh anything you want to talk about about doom eternal well i feel like it's everything that you loved about doom but like cranked up even more like, <laughs> which is hard and, to believe <laughs> right well and it it seems like that the big big improvement or the big thing that they're doing is is that you just have more movement shenanigans like you have a can i can i can i tell you can i tell you what's happening Go for or do you it. not want to know i i uh, really don't mind like hearing about it but it's just seeing it i don't want to see it okay so you have like you have a dash ability like you could like this thing where like you could kind of scoot forward but then you also have like a grappling hook and you can use it to to grapple to enemies and like shoot across you could use it to get across the map so like you have even more movement options to you and i felt like that was the the big thing about doom 16 which was so 2016 which was so interesting was just like the flow of combat was so fluid and and it felt so I don't know. It felt so smooth mm-hmm. and like to add even more of that type of stuff onto it. And then of course being able to, to play cooperatively with somebody else, I think is really, Oh, there's co-op. Be... Yeah. I'm not sure. A stealth stealth knows. I think he was talking about it. Like, uh, I don't know. I think, I think that's something that 
would be just it would just be a lot of fun like i love those types of of games um and being able to, to share that stuff i think with somebody else is 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 i don't know i like it i like it a lot yeah um they didn't give any kind of uh indication of when it's going to be released did they like they didn't give a release date uh i think it's just I, tba still i'm not sure i know squash and stealth are my those are your doom guys <laughs> Uh, Squash says there's a multiplayer invasion mechanic. Uh, other people can join your single player. Oh, interesting. Other people can uh, join your single player game as demons try to kill you. That sounds really cool. Co-op uh, is better than deathmatch for Doom, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. What yeah. do- what Doom 2016 was missing? Yeah, Doom 2016. The multiplayer just kind of bombed on that. It really didn't do very well. I, I don't know. Was it Doom Three where like because the original Doom had four player deathmatch? I remember Doom Three. I thought tried to like didn't they have also like four, just four player deathmatch or like they tried to like? I don't know. Um, I honestly never played any Doom multiplayer. Um, I was always in it for the single player. Yeah, and I think that's fine. I think and I think there's going to be plenty from that the single player there. I think to enjoy i i just i don't know there's nothing there's nothing better i think than just having a game that just knows what it is and just tries to just does everything that you want from that game as cleanly as possible and that's what doom 2016 i think was for me Mm -hmm. yeah did they did they mention anything um about the uh, what was it called in doom 2016 where you could create your own levels you know what i'm talking about i don't know I, I wonder if that's going to be back because that was a really cool thing um, that I feel like could have uh, not really, not really that they could have done any better, but they could just expand on it. Um, and, you know, if, if you could like create your own doom game, that would be awesome, mm-hmm. which I mean, you could kind of do, but it, it seemed like it was a, lim- a little limited um, in the 2016 version. Yeah. Um, Let's see. They also showed off a little bit more of Rage 2, which I know you're very mm-hmm. excited about. Um, and I am too, because um, that's from the developers. Well, the developers that made Mad Max and mm-hmm. also the uh, uh, Avalanche. What are the games? Just Cause. Um, right. So, yeah, it's from the guys that made uh, Just Cause and... Um, Mad Max. So putting those two things together and adding like some Doom stuff, I think would be really cool. Um, I can't wait for that. That's coming out next spring, I believe. I don't know if they have an actual date for that. Okay. Yeah. No. I. I, I think that's. I mean, that's really exciting to me. Like, I. I really liked Mad Max, and I think that's a very capable developer. Um, and it's interesting because a lot of people just kind of associate rage 2 with the original rage and it just feels like it's going to be kind of nothing like it it's just it's just going to be a, a a first person mad max almost like it from what it looks like with some crazy just cause shenanigans probably yeah um and and that that sounds like a that sounds like a fun time to me so yeah definitely excited it it feels like it's going to be mad max with doom gunplay and mm-hmm. the open level craziness of like the just cause games like that seems like it's going to be an amazing game so i hope that that's awesome yep i agree um they mentioned a few other things from QuakeCon, but nothing that i really care about so we're just gonna move on not fallout 76 you don't care about fallout 76 no 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 i'm just kidding (laughs) no i think they didn't really mention anything new that i that i read about like uh they're gonna have the beta in october which seems really late for a beta uh when Mm -hmm. it's coming out in november (laughs) um I think that's essentially just going to be like a stress test on their uh, on their servers. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm very confused on seventy six. I don't know what to think about it. it. It's from for me. What it sounds like is they're they're literally just making the division dark zone 
like in a Fallout universe, which I think could work. I mean, the Dark Zone is a very interesting gameplay concept. Um, I think it was really interesting at first uh, for me when I was playing The Division, and then there's you could very clear problems arose from from that gameplay, but they they evolved it. And I think maybe if they looked at that model and tried to uh, adapt it um, to something that 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 might be it might might be successful it's just it's really hard to say like you know i i've never played rust or conan exiles or these kind of open world multiplayer survival building type games before um a lot of people have tried to get me to it but it's just, it's, it's not my type of gameplay i don't want to work really hard for something and then just lose it all and a lot of people love that tension they mm-hmm. love that those stakes and just for me those stakes are just not something that I like my video games to have, you know, and that's just, it's just my personal preference. So it's hard for me to say um, how that's going to work for me, but it's yeah. interesting. For me, it's always been uh, those games like Rust um, have always been games that just never really have appealed to, to me because I like to play games for a really good story. And so when I go into those games and those survival games and they just kind of throw you in there and they're like now survive, you know? Um, and they don't really give you like any kind of, um, way to progress very much in the story or anything like that. That's why I love Subnautica so much because Mm -hmm. it was a a good, a good survival game, but it was also an amazing story and a really intriguing, um, to uncover the story and the lore of that game. Um, so I'm a little worried about 76 in that, uh, category whether it's going to be whether it's going to have any kind of a story uh, it sounds like you're going to get all of your quests from um, just uh, like robots or computer terminals yeah so you know I don't know I it's tough because in 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 one corner I wasn't expecting a new fallout game for like years um, so when they announced the new fallout game I'm like okay that's fine We'll see what it looks like. Yeah, and it's hard to say. Like we, you know, you can kind of theorize what what thing what's going to happen and how how you might like it. But like I've I've been I've been surprised before by stuff. It's just it's sometimes just really hard to be like, well, this this sounds like the, nothing like what I would want from a Fallout game. So it's like really hard to get excited for it. But I don't know. I'm I'm trying to be cautiously optimistic about it for sure. I mean, I I look at what I love from Fallout, and for me personally, it's it's the exploring, and it's just coming across like random encounters and random uh, stories and scenarios, and I mean that could be pretty interesting if like you're you're coming across random um, you know actual players that are going throughout things. I think it's really just going to depend on what the community is going to be like, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I I worry that everybody's just gonna be killing everyone and just wanting to drop <laughs> nukes on everyone. And and they, they did mention some of that stuff at, at QuakeCon that there is going to be a similar ba- uh, bounty system, like there is in the Dark Zone. When you kill a player, you kill too many players, like you do have a bounty on your head. It comes from your personal bottle cap stash. Um, and and other people will know where you are on the map, so they can come and hunt you. Uh, however. One of the problems with that, and I don't know how, I don't know if they address this, or I, I wasn't listening too clear, carefully about this, but when that was implemented in the dark zone in the division, people would purposely run in front of other people <laughs> to cause them to go rogue, so that they could then turn and kill them, and the and the person that was trying to, play, you know, there's there's a griefing problem in stuff like that, and so like there's a very, it's very hard to police that with just in-game mechanics, you know, like Mm -hmm. you can put in all these things that say this will police this and this and this, there's always going to be a workaround. There's always going to be some way I feel like that people can take advantage of it. And that's, that's just unfortunate. And I think that's what a lot of people that see fallout as a pure single player experience where they don't have to deal with any of that stuff are now having anxiety about maybe having to deal with that stuff. Um, So it's, it's, I don't know who see, who knows. Jimbo, I want to know your hype level on Starfield. <laughs> I I would have to say about 10% because I, I imagine 
that game is a very, very long way out. Um, and I don't really know what to expect. Um, I, I, it's just, it's, I don't know. It's not even on my on radar, I guess, but you, I know you <laughs> are already geeking out about it. And, oh man. Yeah. I mean, my thing is like, I, I'm a huge, huge, huge space, space nerd Mm-hmm. And I I just love like Mass Effect and um uh I'm trying to think of another good space game. Mass Effect's really the only one that comes to mind. It's like a really good space RPG. Um but if if that game is what I hope it is, and I hope it's gonna be like a, a really good single player um you know, set in space, maybe you have like your own starship or something like that and you have like a a limited number of solar systems to explore and different worlds that you can go to and land on and just get involved with random stuff and random societies and Mm -hmm. uh, different races and things like that um i think the other thing that excites excites me so much is this is the first uh new ip that bethesda has created in like 25 years you know they've just had Fallout and and Elder Scrolls that they've been just going back and forth um, with for years, and so for something that they're doing that's completely new, that that really excites me. Right. Yeah, that game is really far out, and who knows when we'll get that. But it is something to look forward to. A lot of people kind of gave them flack for posting, you know, or, or you know, giving these trailers of games that are years and years and years. But I feel like there's. I don't know. There's not too much harm in just you know putting that out there and just just knowing that it at least they're working on something, uh, even if it's just a team of three right now, you know, or something. <laughs> it's it's. I'm sure it's a very tough position for them because Bethesda has been so good in the past couple of years about not showing or not talking about anything until they're ready to release it. You know, like I think they started with like Fallout Four. Like they showed that at E3 20. 15 i think it was and then it mm-hmm. came out in like three months it was out um and they did that with uh with dishonored 2 and with um uh what was the other one well they did they kind of did that with doom they kind of did that with prey like everything that they showed it wasn't that far out um mm-hmm. and so it was kind of tough for them i'm sure it was tough for them to show something uh even more so like elder scroll 6 that that game is probably like decades out <laughs> We'll yeah. be playing on that on the PS7 or something, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, but, yeah. Um, anyway, going back to QuakeCon, that, that's pretty much it for QuakeCon. Uh, I don't know. They may have said some other stuff about Quake Champions. I haven't played any Quake Champions, so I can't really comment too much on that. Yeah, me neither. Um, all right. I thought what we would do is... I want to get to our questions, but I want to... I want to just talk a little bit about Jimbo. Oh, um, wow. I want to get like some, I want to get like some hype checks on some different games, uh, like some upcoming games. Um, okay. I'm just looking through like the games that were uh, either announced or talk, talked about at E3. Um, what's your hype level for Call of Cthulhu? Uh, Do you even know anything about this game? I <laughs> I don't. I mean, I know about the Lovecraft Cthulhu universe, I guess, but I don't know. All right, Jimbo, you got to get excited for this because this game comes out on Halloween this year. Oh, yeah? It's going to be a good spoopy game. Um, I I don't know a whole lot about it. I just know it's a, a horror game. <laughs> I haven't looked uh much of the trailers or anything because, again, I want to go in blind. But um, did you ever play the Cthul- uh, Cth- uh, Call of Cthulhu? Um, I can't remember the name. It was like a 2006 game. Um, I, I remember. I remember. It. I don't. I don't. I don't think I did because I, I didn't actually play a whole lot of horror games before this, except for some. I mean, stuff like Dead Space and and survival, yeah. like Resident Evil and stuff like that. But um, so well, I don't know. I love spoops, you know. So. I'm excited for it. I'm cautiously optimistic because I don't know much about the developers. Um, I don't know what they've done before, but the little bit of gameplay that I've seen looks looks pretty cool. Um, and I'm always down for more horror games. Um, what about Days Gone? What do you think about Days Gone? Is that the is that the zombie one? 
It's the there... zombie one. Yeah, it's the <laughs> the PlayStation the PlayStation exclusive. Um, it kind of it's about like the the biker who's in a biker gang that kind of post apocalyptic world. Is it the one where you're you almost seem to like be controlling a like flow of zombies almost at some point there was always like a a, a huge it it got a little world war z looking yeah i don't i don't know i, I think it'd be interesting I, I actually really really like zombie tropes like i like old zombie movies like dead rising was one of my favorite games um I like that stuff, but I like killing them. And it seems like Days Gone is more like a running away from them. I don't know. So, there were there were quite a few zombies being there? killed. Yeah. Okay. Then I'm on board. All Sign right. me up. Cool. Uh, what about Kingdom Hearts three? <laughs> it's so weird. So I, I I don't know if we talked about this, but there's certain there's certain games and and I guess shows and stuff that like i feel like i was just on the outer edge of you know like because technically i'm i'm supposedly i guess classified as a millennial but i don't feel like one and i feel like like pokemon and stuff i feel like i'm just out of reach and i feel like the kingdom's heart game kingdom heart games i was just i don't know i love i love that stuff but i never played them i tried to play them i think a while back but i never um i never finished one and so like I don't know. I just don't know if it's like one of the. You know how you have those games that like everyone else that just like loves or like gets and like mm-hmm. they're just not for you. Yeah. Like, I think I think Kingdom Hearts might be that game for me. Yeah. And I, I don't. I don't know. Uh, Resident Evil Two. Okay, that I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> I actually because I actually never played Resident Evil Two, um, the original. I did play the original Resident Evil and the remake and four but i i skipped two and three and so like i really want to go back to two but like i I've, I've seen people go back to it and it, it's rough right yeah so like a, a, a remaster is exactly i think what that game needs um to to revisit because i hear really good things about it well this is not just a remaster like this is a full-on remake too right, i right. mean this is like this looks, and hopefully this doesn't upset some of the hardcore Resident Evil uh, 2 fans, but this is like totally different from what RE2 looks like. This is third person over the shoulder instead of well, kind of the top don't down. You have, do you have the Oh, you do have the option. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly how that's going to work. I don't know if it's like you can play the entire game um, deciding on how, on how you do that. Uh, but yeah, they did say that you will have the option, so... That's okay. pretty cool. Um, I I'm super excited for that game though. Um, what about Metro Exodus? Absolutely. <laughs> I I recently played the Metro games and I I really really enjoyed them. Uh, that, speaking though, that was one of the games that the stealth seems to break down. Yeah. A few times for us, but you could also just play that game as a shooter. Yeah. Um, which I ended up doing most of the time because it was really satisfying. I mean, you get a quad barreled shotgun. So I mean that what's not to like? Um, I I'm kind of ashamed on this, Jimbo. I haven't played uh the second one. What's the Last Light? Yeah. I did, I never played Last Light. I played um the first one and loved it. Mhm. And it's kind of one of those things kind of like you were talking about with God of War. Like I really want to play it. I know I'm going to love it. I just need to find the time to play it. I definitely need to play it before I play Exodus. Yeah. Um, it's not they're not very long the first one actually i think was like nine hours or something. yeah last light isn't much longer um and i definitely do like last light more than really the original. um and it looks like yeah a couple other people in chat do as well um i think there's it's it's a little i think there's a little bit more story the character is a lot more interesting uh this time around um and they actually have a little bit of depth to them so you, you still play as uh artium right yep yeah you're still artium so. Jimbo, when are you going to play Stalker? <laughs> <laughs> I told you, I tried to play Stalker. I booted I like, because I have that game. And I, and I launched it and I looked oh, at it and I was like, man. maybe this is something I can play. It's, I, I just, I, it's I, rough. I, 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 could, I know. I couldn't make it through it. I couldn't make it through. I just, <laughs> That's, I knew it. Uh, I, I, I'm almost, it's one of those games that I'm scared to go back and play because I'm afraid of how poor it has held up but at the time that i played it like when i played it that game blew me away like it was the most atmospheric game i'd ever played and scared 
me to death in a few moments a few areas of that game um and i i hope that metro exodus looks very similar to like what uh what we would want from like a future or a, a new updated stalker game so yeah i'm excited um what about spider-man what do you think about that you excited uh i i kind of am like i i like those what insomniac's other games like or oh, sucker punch and insomniac those are the two i get those mixed up a lot but both i like both of their third person kind of open world stuff mm -hmm. like uh i really enjoyed um infamous and and other stuff and i i never played the other spider-mans but um yeah ratchet and clank i actually really liked as well emphasis on the shooting and guns and stuff i don't know there's a lot to i think to like about so and the one of the big things about the, the spider-man game looks so good is again the movement um and then of course the combat that is based off a of movement which i think is really that kind of uh energy that can comes from, comes from that kind of thing is really neat hype level on farming simulator 19 no, i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> but you're you're not answering your hype levels too are you hyped for spider-man as well jimbo i'm i'm like 10 out of 10 on all of these okay okay, okay. i'm just okay just making sure okay <laughs> i'm i'm only mentioning the ones i'm like really excited for Okay. Um, some others than other. Uh, some others than other ones. Um, Spider Man is definitely one that I'm very much looking forward to. I I don't know about you, but I am really getting burned out on all of the Marvel and comic book hero movies and everything like that. Um, it, it sounds like you're not. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally fine. If you are, no. I just I I just I can't take any more. Like I enjoy the Avengers. Um. And I like Iron Man, but I've just gotten so burned out on all the different characters. Um, it's just too much for me. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and confess. And, I, and like, I, I am not a big superhero guy. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I, I don't think I don't think I saw any of the Avengers except for Infinity War, this latest one in the theaters. Um, it's just it's just not my type of bag i like watching them like they're great popcorn flicks and i feel like like infinity ward like you can't really g ask for a better popcorn flick like it has everything you would want from it but it's just like those are not my types of movies like i just i just like different types of movies that's all okay um, that's perfectly fair yeah um what did you think about interstellar the movie yeah um <laughs> so Interstellar is tricky for me because I love a lot. This is this is how I'm going to sound so snobby. All right, so here you go. All right, I loved Interstellar. I loved a lot of the cinematography about it. I loved a lot of the atmosphere about it. I loved a lot of the performances. There's some great, great, great moments when they come up from the water planet and they've been down there for forty something years and like, like they find this stuff out. Like that was, I think that's a great cinematic moment. Mm -hmm. But I feel like that third act. I don't like Deus Ex Machina's and they have a huge one in there and just everything just kind of wraps up nicely. And it, it kind of drives me bonkers when that happens. And but it's also like because I love that movie so much. I didn't really mind it. I just yeah. it's like, I don't know. The soundtrack's great. Like there's there's so much to love. It just it just kind of after the that third act just doesn't make a lot of sense. Um and yeah. it's just kind of like you just have to accept it i don't know i completely but. agree with you but at the same time it's like i don't know how you could have done it differently like you had right. to have some kind of crazy thing happen to explain the mm -hmm. craziness um i don't know i love interstellar yeah um let's see what about death stranding so i don't know what to i don't know what to make of it I don't think anybody if does. If it's going to be scary and it's going to be like, if it, if it's going to be like, because Kojima is really good at producing stuff, right? Like PT, the, the little demo that they made. Yeah. Like that was a, that was, that was some, that was going to be one of the best horror games ever made. Right. And like, if, if there's any, if there's any bit of PT that they transferred into Death Stranding, I absolutely want to play that. That's game. what I'm hoping. Yeah. That they take like some, some ideas or some elements that they had from death uh, or from uh, PT and 
move that into Death Stranding. Um, yeah, I don't know what to think of Death Stranding, though. I also don't have any clue when that game is going to be out. Yeah. I kind of feel like Sony is just giving total creative control to um, <laughs> to Kojima, and I feel Which like Kojima dangerous. yeah, could literally just spend the rest of his life working on that game. <laughs> yeah. So I hope we get that game at some point. I hope it's good. Um, I hope it makes sense. <laughs> it's probably not going to make sense. No. <laughs> um, what about Ghosts of Tsushima? That's the that's the kind of third person samurai looking game, right? Mm-hmm. I thought that looked amazing. Um, it's like one of those, and that's PS4 exclusive, right? It is, yeah. It's one of those. It's one of those like ps4 exclusive games that i felt like it's like okay yeah this is because i've already felt like the console that console purchase is justified with uh, horizon and god of war and um a a couple others i can't think of them right now but um it just it looked it looked absolutely gorgeous i think the story if there's a kind of like i said so the other because i like westerns i automatically also like um old eastern samurai films because they're basically share the same types of themes and so, like, if they can incorporate that kind of stuff into a playable um, third-person action adventure game, like, absolutely, I'm on board with that. What's your hype level for Crackdown Three? <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, again, you're gonna think this is crazy. But I absolutely <laughs> loved Crackdown. Do 1. you? Nice. Absolutely. The first Crackdown was seriously one of my favorite games on the 360. I love collecting stuff, and there are so many agility orbs and hidden orbs, and I played this actually with uh, a lot of uh, some of my friends. Like uh, I don't know if Dennis is, is still in chat, but we co-op, because you could co-op that game. You're like a superhero. Like you, had, you could jump everywhere. There's just like so many awesome, cool things. It's just it's stupid fun. I don't think Crackdown 3 is going to survive. I think it's going to... I think it's going to pull a... Um, Oh, scale bound, and I think it's just going to be vaporware, or they're going to just cancel it. Which is because Crackdown Two was not as good. I did not like Crackdown Two very much. So, I think I, it's I, kind I, of a no win situation for them at this point, right? Yeah, um, yeah. I, I, all these big exclusives just keep either disappearing or getting. I, I don't know. It's just it's unfortunate. I think Microsoft's in a really tough spot with that stuff right now. They are. Yeah. They. Man, I feel like they're doing so much to to like they're doing so much towards pc gaming to you know um all of their uh exclusives are coming out on pc which is awesome Mm -hmm. but at the same time it's like they're shooting themselves in the foot because nobody's Mm -hmm. buying an xbox you know like there's 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 zero reason to i know there's no xbox one exclusive anymore everything is also playable on and 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 it's all and if it is on it's cross it's cross play too like sea of thieves or something like exactly that. yeah could have i don't know and they they charged a full 60 dollar price tag for that game because it was on console when it probably should have been 30 dollars on pc uh from the get-go i don't know there's just there's so many weird decisions and i i don't i don't know what they're gonna do about it you know you know microsoft bought um the studio that made hellblade oh really did you know that I did not know that, and actually, kind of is unfortunate to me because yeah, I really, really, really liked Hellblade. Yeah, I'm kind of worried about their future. I mean, I hope that Microsoft says, you know, like here's full creative control, make whatever you want. If you want to make another Hellblade-like game, go for it. I'm worried that they're gonna be like, uh, you know, work on the next Forza game for us. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, yeah, so I don't know. Um, all right, a couple more. Uh, tell me what you think about Sekiro or Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. I I don't think I know <laughs> anything about that one. This is the FromSoft game, uh, Bloodborne, Dark Souls. The guys. Oh, make, okay, 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 yeah, yeah. That's their new game. Um, I so I haven't actually so I haven't finished any of the Souls series. I played Demon Souls. The first one when it first came out, and I was like, "This is awesome!" Because we could actually, you could actually play with your friends and stuff. And we, I remember taking them to Tower Night with with a group of friends and stuff. Nice. And I really like, I really like Bloodborne because I really like that Lovecraftian kind of aesthetic. And but I've never like dove into those games, and so like, I don't know. But I did. So From Software also made 
this Xbox game that I really, really like called Otagi. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. I have, yeah. And so this game, I'm if it's maybe I don't know, I don't know. I haven't seen anything on it. Is it more like a Souls game, or is it more? Is it something um, a bit different? It's definitely going to be more Souls esque, uh, okay. but it's it's going to be like a set in feudal Japan. Um, mm-hmm. It's going to be more samurai type things, but yeah, it's definitely got some pretty hardcore Dark Souls and Bloodborne vibes going on with it. Cool. Well, I don't know. Uh, that's that that setting I feel like is is always like a big draw for me. Um so like I don't know. It's hard it's hard for me to not get excited for something like that even though I haven't actually played what I should have played. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh I think we were talking about that um a while ago like which one you should play first, weren't we? Right. Were you asking I, that or was it somebody else? Yeah, because I, I think we talked about like how I really just kind of wanted to jump into Bloodborne and you're like, well, you might ruin every other game for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because... it's really tough because, I mean, I don't know. I would love to hear from anybody else in chat that has like played Bloodborne and then gone back to the Souls games because to me, I love all of them, but Bloodborne is like as high as I can you know, rank it. And uh, the rest of the Dark Souls games are very, very close. But once you play Bloodborne, I feel like um, it may be a little difficult to go back to the slow gameplay of the Dark the Dark Souls type games. Um, mm-hmm. And it would just be like such a shame if you didn't go through Dark Souls because that's yeah. such an an amazing series. Um. Squash says, I definitely think Bloodborne has the best and smoothest combat of them all. Yeah, I agree with that. But at the same time, it's like the lore in the 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 story, if you can call it a story of the Dark Souls games, are just fascinating to me. I really enjoy those. All right, one more. Okay. Um, what is your hype level on Cyberpunk 2077? Oh, man. <laughs> uh it's probably it, this is this is this is so weird to me also because like i haven't played witcher 3 <laughs> shame i know shame. i know <laughs> the, and the the story I, I have a story behind it because i way back i don't know how many years ago like i wanted to pl- i started playing the witcher when when the witcher 3 wasn't out yet just witcher 2 was and i wanted to get through the witcher and i wanted to get through witcher 2 in in preparation for witcher 3 and it just burned me out on the whole thing, right? Um, yeah, they're kind of but, long uh, games. Yeah, well, and it, like the, the first one doesn't hold up, and um, I had some save game problems and all this stuff. It was it was just a nightmare uh, of a of a. And I just it was it was it was it was rough, and I just had to can it all, and I I I didn't. But I know I know how good it is, and it's one of the Witcher Three is one of those games that I know that I would love, even because I've I've seen just enough of it, and I know how it works enough to know that it's exactly my type of game and but like the cyberpunk sci-fi universe is also like one of my favorite types of genres like blade runner is literally one of my favorite movies you know and so like (laughs) and i i do prefer like a a first person type perspective and on some of that stuff even though i love the character model of Geralt and and all that stuff it's Mm -hmm. just like Cyberpunk is like I, I really, really, really want to play that game. <clears throat> Me too. That I saved that for last because that is probably my most uh uh the game I'm looking forward to the most um in the next few years, whenever that game comes out. Um man, I just cannot wait to see what that game is about. Um I I also didn't have any problem with it being in first person when they made that announcement. I right. honestly kind of expected it to be in first person i didn't think it was going to be in third yeah. person so i didn't really get the controversy about that um but yeah i'm totally fine with that um yeah. what do you think of blade runner 2049 <laughs> i love that <laughs> i love that movie so much oh like, it was so you, good did you i okay, good. yes absolutely i feel like so when I, after i watched that movie I, I felt like because so many so many movies at the time it, it started to do these resurgence like these 30 year later sequels yeah and i feel like they all just were doing them all completely wrong and i feel like 2049 just did absolutely everything right that you want from a movie like that yeah um like it's it wasn't about 
bringing back Deckard Kane or not Deckard Kane, <laughs> bringing back Deckard, uh, Dick Deckard. Uh, it was, it was, uh, it's it been was... 30 years. <laughs> Stay a while. And listen. No, it was, uh, I don't know. It was, it was different and, and, but it was so well done. And, and it, it Dennis, uh, villain villain yeah i don't know how to say his name (laughs) he dv he's like yeah he's literally like my favorite director right now Um, he is just incredible um that that movie is i think one of visually one of one of the most stunning pieces of media that has ever been created like and and it's a masterpiece the sound design was so good in that too like Mm -hmm. everything all senses were firing like it's it's great Dennis knows because it's French and he's French Canadian. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not even going to try and say it because I would just embarrass myself <laughs> on that pronunciation. I really need to learn how to say it though because I do love that director. It's like it's just like Villeneuve or something. Villa, like it's it's really. It, I it, think that's pretty wanted, close. Yeah, Villeneuve. I keep wanting to saying Villanueva, but it's not. It's yeah. like it's yeah. Um. Awesome. Cool. Well. Let's see. We um we're getting pretty close to wrapping up here. Let's take a look sure. really quick. I found this really cool website that I like to look at each week. Um it's from mobygames.com. I don't know if you've ever heard of them, but uh you can put in the date for today and it just gives you like everything that has happened on this date in history uh for gaming wise. So, okay. I figured we'd play a little a little game here. Um I'm going to let you guess what year some of these games came out. And there's actually All some right. pretty big ones. Um Uh let's see. We'll start with an easy one. Uh Madden NFL 2010. What year what did that you- come out? <laughs> 2009. That's it. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> it was a slightly trick question. Yeah, they always come out, you know, the year before. Um, there's actually some pretty big games that were released, uh, on this date in history. What about sleeping dogs? Oh man. I, I can't remember. It, so whenever, cause I wanted to play that game and I remember like I tried to play it on PC. It was one of those things where I didn't have a good enough PC to play PC games. I had to play them on <laughs> yeah. the console. So I don't is that was that 2010 like was that or is it later 2012 2012 okay. yeah I thought it was uh earlier than that too uh let's see Madden NFL no I'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> apparently uh 2000 uh or NFL 08 came out on the same date um it came August out August 14 came out 2007 August 14 oh, okay. um I didn't even know that this was a game. The Italian job. Oh no! <laughs> what what year did the the movie come? Well, the the remake, right? Because the original one was like from the sixties. Right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure this was pretty close to the time the movie came out. The problem is, is I always think of those movies as like. For some reason, I always think, oh, this is like it was like in the nineties, but like I know that they're like nothing actually came out in the nineties. <laughs> Like the nineties was a terrible decade. It was all like two thousand something. So I want to say like two thousand and six or something. Two thousand two. Two thousand two. Oh wow. Yep. That's actually pretty close uh, to the nineties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's see. We got a few more here. Um Oh, this is a good one. Darksiders 2. Oh, man. Came out for the PS3, Xbox 360, and Windows all on this year. 2005. Um. Oh, no, you're way off. 2012. Oh, oh wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> the 360 was still... Oh, yeah, that's right. I guess that's... I don't know. What the 360 didn't even come out till. What, yeah, 2006. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. It's like, yeah, because I keep thinking, because it's like, like it doesn't seem like 2018 to me. Like in my mind, it's like 2010. You know, I know, you know Jimbo. Yeah, when somebody says like so. 2008, I'm like, yeah, that was just a few years ago, right? <laughs> yeah. well, it was a decade ago. Oh, oh my, my goodness. Um, 
Brian's saying one of the greatest games ever came out on the state. Wow, I don't know. There's a, I mean, there's a bunch of things that came out on the state. Um, was it Noah Ark Builder? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, let's see. Such a squash. I I don't see any other like major ones. I, I may have looked over it though. Let me see if I can give you one more to guess. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh James Bond 2007 or James Bond didn't come out in 2007. James Bond 007, The Duel. Um this was a Genesis release, so that should give you some idea. Whoa, Genesis? <laughs> 93 that's it no -uh. <laughs> that's it oh 1993 um, oh, metroid metroid that is not on the list <laughs> it says it's all the way at the bottom i don't see that uh my mine goes from 1985 to 1988 weird are you sure it was this day august 14th or are you in uh are you in EU or something like that? And it's August 15th. Oh, no. That was the... <laughs> uh, yours is on the 15th. Yeah, we're still we're still in the 14th. We're we're behind. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that came out. It's kind of crazy how much stuff came out on August 14th, actually. But that's August some of the. It's just a weird month. It feels like. Yeah, sometimes it's like a really big month. Sometimes it's a really dry month. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, it's it's no worries, Brian. Um, that's kind of funny, actually, that you're you're in the future. <laughs> um. Okay. Well, let's see. Let's go ahead and um. Let's go ahead and just really quickly talk about some of the upcoming games. Um, I'm just going to read through these really quick, Jimbo, and you can kind of, if there's anything you want to talk about, feel free to jump in and stop me. Okay. But um, on August 13th, we've got, uh, actually, that was yesterday. Um, I normally do these on Monday, <laughs> but oh, okay. um, uh, that was Sword Legacy Omen that came out for the PC. Um, August 14th, that's the day. We've got Tanglewood for PC and Sega Mega Drive. What is a Sega Mega Drive? <laughs> <laughs> that's the Genesis. That's the, the uh, but it's the, uh, I guess they have a, because it was it was called the uh, the Mega Drive in in Europe I thought or in the UK but that's also like a, like a modern it's considered like a modern Genesis really right? I didn't know that well you can get Tanglewood okay um Phantom <laughs> Doctrine Phantom Doctrine is a game I'm really excited about uh, that's I know the XCOM game. yeah I know a couple other people that were excited about that it looks really good it's like a an XCOM like game, but it's set in the eighties during the cold war. So there's like some espionage going on and you play as spies and things like that. Um, let's see. Also on the 14th. Oh, this is a huge release. I don't, I don't, do you play uh world of Warcraft at all? Uh, not anymore. No. But so yeah, I, I don't either. Uh, but I know everyone's super excited for battle of Azeroth that came out today. Um, I've seen lots of people playing that. Yep. Uh, we also have Death's Gambit, uh, Gambit, which came out today. Um, so far, from what I've seen, it looks really good. Um, 2064 Read Only Memories. That's a Switch game. I don't know what that is. It sounds kind of like a a match three game or something like that. It could oh, be way okay. off. Um, the Walking Dead, the final season. Have you Did played you play? any of the Walking Dead games? I played the first season and then the the little half season that they did. Yeah, to get ready for, to get ready for season two, but I never played season two. I started season two and just couldn't finish it. Um, you know, I think it was one of those things with the way that they were coming out with episode episodic releases. I played, I think, the first episode of season two, and it was like, okay, this is pretty good, and then I just never went back. Um, yeah, and I kind of regret that. Um. Are you? Do you think you'll ever go back to those games? Like, would you ever I, finish them? 
I I'd like to. I I feel like I really like the Telltale games. Like the the wife and I played the Game of Thrones one, and it's like there's some really cool stuff that happened. The Wolf like Among some, Us. Did you ever play that? Yeah, she she played that and she absolutely loved it. I have not played it. Um, she she plays a lot more games that I want to <laughs> play than I do. Um, but yeah, she you know she absolutely loved the Wolf Among Us. So, um. I, I would like to. Uh, it's it feels interesting though because after playing like Life is Strange, I feel like that they've kind of evolved that formula a little bit, and so it yeah. feels a little, a little dated to go back to those those games. But I feel like the stories are still definitely worth revisiting. Yeah, Telltale has a hard and true uh, way of doing things, and I feel like they're definitely getting a bit dated. Um, mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's like. Some people love those, you know. Some people yeah. just really enjoy that. So maybe they, sh- maybe they just have carved a little niche for their audience, and they're just going to stick with that. Yeah. Um. Moving on to the fifteenth, we've got State of Mind for PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. Uh, fifteenth, uh, and sixteenth. Oh, that must be. I guess it comes out on different days for different systems. Hero Defense. Um. The 16th, we've got Destination Primus, Primus Vita for PC, uh, Red's Kingdom for the Switch, and then on the 20th, we've got Spectrum for the Switch, and then that comes out on PS4 on the 21st, and Xbox One on the 24th. A lot of so, Switch games. Yeah. More Switch games, the be- the better. I'm I'm happy. Yeah. I love my Switch. Yeah. What would you What would you rate the Switch out of 10? Um, it's definitely up there. It's getting up there for me. I played, um, I think Mario Odyssey is, is fantastic. And Breath of the Wild was really good, but all these like little indie titles are like kind of perfect for that. Yeah. That, like Hollow Knight is like, I feel like it's built for that platform. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and those types of like dead cells is on there now. I think it's like, it's pretty, it's pretty solid for that stuff, and just, but you just need you need to have that content out there, and they they've seemed to be getting it, which is the, the most important thing, um, right? Because a lot of that stuff uh, just it was just a bit skipped over, but I think the portability of that platform is uh, is definitely lending itself to to those types of games. How do you um, how do you typically play your Switch? Do you typically play it in handheld mode or in the dock, or is it like fifty fifty? Uh, it kind of be like when I was playing Breath of the Wild, I wanted to play that on the big TV, mm-hmm. but like I found myself most of the time just playing it handheld in bed, like really? before, before I went to sleep. And I, I, it's kind of awkward sometimes, I think, depending on the game, but I, I it's just so convenient. And so yeah. I don't know. Breath of the Wild is a really good bed game because you can just like yeah. do a couple of shrines and right. go to sleep. Um, do you play? Do you play with like the uh, the Joy Cons connected, or do you have a Pro controller, or how do you how do you I, prefer to play? I, I do have a Pro controller, but most of the time I just keep the Joy Con. I actually ordered. They Hori has a D pad Joy Con that they I think is coming out at the end of this week that I'm really excited to get for uh, to to play on Hollow Knight. I really like playing Hollow Knight with the D pad, so yeah. I use the Pro controller actually through the through Steam to play the majority of hollow Knight. And it oh was, really it worked yeah it worked really well nice um yeah for me i i love the pro controller i really 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 hate the joy cons <laughs> yeah they're so small and uh especially that right one i feel like is very awkward because the mm-hmm. the uh joystick is in the middle you know and so it's like i want to hold it like this but you have to kind of like adjust yeah. um but yeah i i still love the switch um Brian's asking, "What are my top five games on the Switch?" Uh, man, I don't know. I've <laughs> I've only played like Breath of the Wild, which I loved. I loved Mario Odyssey, and then um, I've got Xenoblade Chronicles Two, which looks really interesting, but it's also like a hundred hour game. So I mm-hmm. want to play that at some point. But yeah, there's so many of those. Um, I mean, now that Salt Salt and Sanctuary is out on the Switch, that is a fantastic game. Of course, Hollow Knight. Uh, I don't know. Was that five or four? <laughs> <laughs> Those are a few. Um, so yeah. Anyway, let's uh, let's move on and let's 
go ahead and we'll take a few questions. I've, I've got some questions that um, Jimbo had actually collected from his, uh, his gang, and we'll just kind of run through these and just kind of rapid fire these. Um, okay. First up is from Slunks. Um, what was the best year of gaming for you personally, and what was the best year in game releases? You want to go first? No, you go first. <laughs> um let's see what was the best year in gaming for you i honestly think last year i i feel like this is a bit of a cop-out but like last year was an amazing year for video games um like we had horizon we had the the uh the switch launched we had breath of the wild we had odyssey um we had prey um i know i'm forgetting some other ones I just feel like last year, I'm sure that there are some better years or maybe equal years, but last year was phenomenal in its mm -hmm. number of high quality releases. Hollow Knight technically released last year, <laughs> even though we didn't yeah. play it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was actually going to say last year as well, mainly because Horizon and Breath of the Wild was on there, uh, which were two, two of my favorite. Resident um, Evil 7 came out. Yeah. But, uh, um, so it's funny because Den Dennis says uh, Gears Bash in 2006, which is the other part of that. The, the best year for gaming for me actually was probably back then um, because I had just got my Xbox 360 and we had a gang of people that we played with. And we pl I played a lot of Call, Call of Duty, Modern Warfare. I think, was that 2006? I think that maybe that was the year after. I'm not sure. It was but around played, that time. Yeah, I don't know. We just we, it was like I was in college. It was like it was like almost like a golden age of gaming for me because I had like no responsibility and um it was it was just it was nice. Um I really I don't know. But it's hard to pick just one year, right? I know. Yeah, I mean, I think like that was probably similar for me. I don't know exactly what year it was, but it was definitely around when I was much younger, you know, like right out of high school in college. Like you say, you don't have any responsibilities. You can just play games for like hours and hours and hours and yeah. days and days and days. Um, maybe the year that uh, that The Witcher 1 came out because The Witcher 1 just changed my life for yeah. all time when I played that game. Um, and I've told the story many times, but I played I was playing through Oblivion before that and uh, that was like my first big RPG that I had played and um then I went into The Witcher which was totally blind I knew nothing about this game I knew nothing about these devs uh you know who they were or anything like that and I got just so engrossed in that game um and I I didn't know that video games could like tell stories like that you right. know like like The Witcher 1 had uh, so I don't know, whatever year that was, I would say is my best year. 2007, I think that was. Um, Amanda says, uh, what's a cult hit game you love, but nobody else really knows? That's a tough one. I don't know if you have anything I, right I off do, the top I, of your head. I do, but I feel like it's getting more known. So I there's a game called Earth Defense Force. I don't know if you ever Oh, heard of it. yeah, I haven't played it. I know of it. Yeah, it was so I I had got one of one of my first things like I, I imported a, a Japanese PlayStation Two back in college, and they had this series of games called the Simple Two Thousand series, these budget twenty dollar games, and that was one of them, uh, Earth and Earth Defense Force, and you you could play either as a Marine uh, that shot all these machine guns, or this uh, this pale wing jetpack girl with all these energy weapons and i absolutely <laughs> fell in love with it because you, you just fought all these giant ants it was uh, giant insects and stuff and it was just like it was so stupid fun and they kept bringing them out they brought out 2017 for the xbox 360 uh and then they just did uh earth defense for like 4.5 i think for like the playstation 4 which is like a remastered version of all this stuff and like i i absolutely love those games so much um the the wife and I play them. You could couch co-op them. Uh, it was just uh, that's, but not very many people have heard about it. And not very many people play it. So uh, nice. That that would be a choice. Yeah, I don't know what I don't know what my game would be because up until recently, I never really played a lot of um, a lot of indie games or a lot of unknown games. 
I definitely like I mean I could say Lords of the Fallen is one um also the sequel or not really sequel but the next game that those guys made was um oh I'm totally blanking on it The Surge um which I guess those are lesser known games but they're kind of Dark Souls like games Right 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 yeah Um I can't think of anything else. I may think of something else as we go and I'll come back to it. Sure. Um, Rage 8 asks, did you ever play Red, Fa- Red Faction <laughs> Gorilla? <laughs> um, I, I, don't, I don't know if this was just a, a regular question that he wanted to ask in chat or whatever, but um, I, that, was, that was the third person one, right? There was a Red Faction. I think so, yeah. And then there was Red Faction Gorilla. I, I, I played the original Red, Red Faction on PlayStation 2, I thought, and it was a big deal because they had destructible environment and stuff, but I don't think I ever played Gorilla. But if, if I did, I don't remember it. So the remastered or the the remastered as they call it <laughs> edition oh. came out. <laughs> any uh any hype for jumping back into that? I mean, I don't know. It's so hard for me to pick on those games because I'm sure that I'm sure it's really good, but it's like sometimes it's like you just have to accept, well, I didn't play this, so I just needed to, to like not play it, move on. So yeah. I don't know if it, if that's something that I would jump into or not. Uh commentator for you um asks what were the games you had uh wait what were the games that had the biggest influence on you as a kid that has led you to making a lifelong passion making it a lifelong passion what do you you go first for this one well that's tough because i never really played many oh, that's right. video games when i was so like i mean the first video game i remember playing was like um <laughs> did you ever play free ski <laughs> yeah on the on the wind like windows it's like windows five or whatever yeah i think was that's 3.1 i don't remember i think it may have been 3.1 it was like early 90s yeah um a little yeti <laughs> i think that's the first video game i remember ever playing really? is that game yeah um I may have played like solitaire or some of those card games before that, but that's the one yeah. that I, I, that sticks out. But I mean, I don't know that, that didn't really seem to influence me on the kind of games that I play today. <laughs> um, um, I think more so like the games that influence me are probably going to be games that are, I played a little bit later in life. Like when I was, uh, more of a teenager and those were like mm-hmm. the, the definitely the Tom Clancy Rainbow Six games, like the original Rainbow Six. I loved, loved, loved yeah. that game. That was my first experience with online gaming. Um, I kind of accidentally did that. I didn't even know what I was doing, uh, but I was so excited and I was showing my parents that I was like playing with people. And it was probably <laughs> terrible for everyone else because we were on dial up. And yeah. uh, so it was like a probably a terrible experience for everyone because the lag was so bad. But I thought it was super cool. Um, yeah, I think that definitely, I guess I would say Rainbow Six influenced me in a lot of ways in that I like stealth games. I like um, mm-hmm. I like taking things slowly and like really um, setting up, you know, my my engagements for those types of games. Yeah, I think that's cool. What about you? Um, so I've. I've been playing games for a really long time. <laughs> uh, I I think I I have my dad and my and my brother to to blame. I think for a lot of the the early stuff. The first games I remember playing were on an Atari um, uh, Pitfall and Pole Position. Um, so we we played a lot of the uh, Atari Eight Hundred XL is what it was called. It was uh, probably the there's a lot of good stuff because the, the 2600 was garbage. Like all the games of the 2600 were just really rough and bad. And like the 800 had a lot of the true arcade ports of, of those games. The 2600, just, those ports were just not good. And so I remember playing a lot of that. And then the Atari ST, which was like had a floppy drive. And we played the, I played the, the first multiplayer game I remember playing was this game called Midi Maze on the Atari ST where you actually hooked up other computers via the, the MIDI port, you know, that music, that yeah. sound port, <laughs> like you could actually interface with other computers there. And it was literally that was like those, these round smiley faces and you shot like little <laughs> balls at him. It was a first person shooter in this maze. Wow. And I was, and it was like, that was the first, like, I loved it. Like I, and I, I actually was like, I like where I got my shooter. Like, that's where I cut my teeth. <laughs> like I got the, the, 
the kind of uh, I wanted to do competitive stuff. Anyways, and so like, but it wasn't until probably like I was a little bit older. Um, and I, funnily enough, probably the Nintendo 64 is probably the, the console that I remember the most fondly about like playing games. Like, I mean, we play, we had an NES and, and, and all that other stuff and my brother and I played it, but like I really started getting games that I was engaged with, I think on the 64. Uh, and of course, like some PC stuff, Dark Forces on PC and that kind of thing. Um, we, I remember we had to upgrade our our computer, our home PC, to eight megabytes of RAM, <laughs> megabytes of RAM, so that we could play Dark Forces on it. And nice. I don't know. There's a lot of that stuff. Though. All those Star Wars games, you know, Jedi Knight and all that stuff. Like those. Oh, Jedi yeah, Knight been was so good. While, yeah. So. Very cool. Um. Commentator also asks, uh, what would you coach or how would you coach someone who is doing their very first tw- uh, stream on Twitch? Someone entirely new to the platform. I, uh, well, I mean, I, I'll say first, I feel like you'll probably have a better answer, <laughs> but I, <laughs> um, I was very new to Twitch. Uh, so I, I had been aware of Twitch for a long time um, since like, well, even before it was Twitch, back in the uh, um, what was it called? Justin TV. Justin TV days. Mm-hmm. Um, but only just like very, I kind of knew what it was. I didn't really watch it, but I started watching it. I guess like 2014, 2015, quite a bit. And uh, I never really engaged or really talked to anyone on there because I kind of just watched all of the big streamers. Um, and it was always something that I was interested in uh, streaming. And so I finally just decided just to try it out. And I, I I still kind of to this day, I'm just doing it as like an experiment just to see what happens. Um, so I would say just just try it out and just see. You don't really need a whole lot to start. Um, uh, you don't even really need a webcam. Um, you know, I think a, a good mic is probably a good uh, thing to have. But just pick a yeah. game that you love and just start playing it and just enjoy it. Yeah, I mean that's the only thing. I, I I I'm not I'm not someone I think that can coach other people. Like I mean, like you said, like I'm just I'm just kind of figuring this stuff out as I go. Anyways, the the only I think the only the biggest important thing and the thing that I like when I like watching other streamers is like I just really like it when they have fun. You know, like I yeah. just want to watch other people having fun. I want to join in. I want to share these experiences with them. So like when I see somebody, when somebody asks me about that stuff, it's literally just like. Like I think that people are almost afraid. Like like, and I do this sometimes too. I get kind of caught in stuff. But like I don't know, just like laugh about stuff. Like point out stuff that you like, you know, and stuff stuff that you you think is funny and interesting. And just like I don't know, you're playing games with a bunch of other friends, basically. I don't know. Yeah, um, I, that's the other thing I was going to mention. Is uh, like I said, I I started out just watching all of the big streamers and never really engaged with anybody. And since I've started streaming, I just cannot tell you how much I've enjoyed talking to people like you and getting involved in the communities. Mm -hmm. And it's so cool to talk to smaller streamers and actually being able to talk to the person that's playing the video game and not just, you know, type in chat and go by in uh, no time. Um, It's really cool. I I really uh, have enjoyed meeting people and uh, sharing my love for this, this thing that we call video games. Yeah um let's see moving on mitts uh mitsunito aka mitts um says you are both content creators who use camera who use a camera uh what's your current go-to setup and what's the dream setup camera and lens wise oh man (laughs) so okay so uh, for people that don't know um i'm i'm a photographer i'm a full-time photographer i do primarily weddings um, that's how I make my living anyway. I like to do other things, but weddings pays the bills. Um, and Jimbo, you do video production and uh, a little bit of vi- videography and that kind of stuff. Um, yep. I'm going to guess that you are Canon because everybody uh, I, that does video is Canon. <laughs> uh, I was team Canon. I'm actually team Sony, Sony oh, currently. Okay. Nice. Uh, but I still have my 5D. So, so the question is what uh oh well um he first says what is your current setup um what which sony are you using right now 
Uh, A7S2 uh, is what I'm using. You're not a you're not a Nikon guy, are you? I am a Please Nikon. Say. Oh no, <laughs> Hal, you were doing so good. <laughs> I love my night. I love my Nikon's. <laughs> All right, fair. Enough. Um, what about uh, what about lens wise? What's do you have any like your favorite lens or favorite lenses? Well, yeah, because I did start on Canon, I do use Canon glass most of the time. Uh, I like Canon L and I like Zeiss. Zeiss's are expensive, though. I don't have too many of them. I just have a 50 millimeter prime. Um, did you uh, have you ever heard the story about Stanley Kubrick renting the lenses from NASA when he filmed? Mm -hmm. um, uh, oh, what was it? I can't remember the name of the movie. Um, it was one of the movies that he shot in completely natural light, and it was like f f zero point seven lenses or something like that. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. Um, I uh, yeah, so you you obviously use Nikon lenses as well. I do, yeah. So I well, I use Nikon cameras. I actually really like the Sigma lenses, um, the Sigma mm -hmm. Art lenses. So I have the thirty five, um, which is probably one of my favorite lenses. Um, but then also the Nikon eighty five is uh I'm a big prime guy. I like the primes. Yep. Um yep. so the eighty five and the thirty five are probably my favorite lenses, my go to lenses. Um but I always have a seventy to two hundred with me. That's kind of like one of those lenses you have to have as a wedding photographer. Um yeah. a good macro lens is good. Um and then just kind of like a, a standard zoom lens, like a 24 to 120 or 24 to 70 or something like that. But I guess, so So the other question is, what is like your dream camera setup? Oh. <laughs> we could we well, could probably get kind of crazy with this. Yeah, like an Ari Alexa or a Red, <laughs> uh, whatever, whatever, the Dragon, Mystic, whatever I forget they're on. I mean, but I mean, those things are so out of reach. Yeah. Uh, honestly, um i wouldn't i wouldn't mind just having like a like a even just like a a, a lumix panasonic lumix gh5 as like a backup or to mess around with or um i would even like a i think re has a pocket like a, a mini that you can get but i mean those things are, they're all just super expensive and you have to get a whole another set of lenses and you have to get to really take advantage of that stuff i mean the dream setup is hundreds of thousands of dollars <laughs> so yeah this stuff can get kind of crazy expensive um yeah i don't know for me honestly like I, I i shoot with a nikon d850 um and i have the d750 i have a couple of those as like my backup slash, slash secondary cameras that i use and i really love those cameras i mean for what i do um they're really great i guess lens wise like if i if I could really go crazy, then I would probably get like some crazy uh, Zeiss lenses. Yeah, um, some Cine primes for yeah. the anamorphics, that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, there's a photographer that I follow that has actually been using anamorphic lenses for photography, doing yeah. some really cool things with that. Um, let's see. Mitz has another question here. What is your opinion on streaming as a profession? Is it a pipe dream for most everyone or something anyone can make a living at with enough time and dedication? You do that. <laughs> um, so it's tough for me because I, I got into this not, you know, with, with no intentions of making any money or just uh, making anything from it. Um, I really just wanted to do it as as a hobby um and i've really been blown away by the generosity of people on twitch um mm -hmm. it's it's kind of crazy just how generous and nice people are um with you know with doing things and i i don't know if um you should go into it well i don't think you should go into it expecting to make a living off of it um right. i think that I think that it can be done. I think it's going to be very, very difficult. It's going to take a long time to build the community that you need. Um, so, I mean, I, I think it's a, it's like a lot of other things. Like <clears throat> if you want to be a musician, a famous musician or like an actor or something like that, like, you know, 
you can do it, but it's very, very difficult, and it's not something that everyone's going to do. And I, I personally don't see myself ever doing this full time, but um, I definitely enjoy it as a hobby, and um, uh, just enjoy seeing where it's going. Yeah, I think I'm in the same boat. Um, this is, I mean, this started out as a hobby for me, um, and I mean, it, it, I don't really have any delusions of, of being able to go full time. Um, I mean, I, I don't know. You, you kind of, you kind of like have a, maybe a, a pipe dream in the back. that's like, yeah, this would be cool to, to be able to do this and, and nothing else and have a, make a living. But it's, it, it does take a lot. I mean, it, it still does feel like it takes a lot of effort, you know, I don't want to say work because I, but it, it does take a lot of effort. And I don't think that it's something you can take lightly, but yeah know, it's fun yeah it go into it just just for fun like i i definitely wouldn't recommend going into it like thinking you know okay in six months i'm going to be full-time i'm going to be doing this nothing but full-time um mm. this is going to be my only source of income like don't don't do that <laughs> yeah just just go into it as a hobby uh let's see moving on stealth um is has got a few questions here uh how is your how is your career as a video production this is more geared towards you um how has your career as a video production artist influenced the way you stream and the content you wish to put out on twitch but i guess you could also just change video production i guess as a as a visual for you as a even just a photographer right like yeah does it does it have an influence on on what you you do on twitch Mm. yeah i mean to a certain degree like i i have thought about uh and i actually did this a little bit when i first started just kind of experimenting with um editing on stream like showing my editing process um and i i did find that some people were interested in that i think that that is still something that i'm interested in doing i love teaching and uh helping other people mm -hmm. learn photography um so um you know, in that way, that's something that has kind of made me think about maybe that's something else I could do with the stream. But um, I, I'm guessing he's probably asking more towards you, like what, because uh, you do so many cool things with like After Effects and have all these cool little effects that you do for each game and overlays and all this stuff. Yeah, I guess like, so, I mean, me, so you, I mean, so when my work situation changed at the beginning of the year, um, I kind of like, I, I, I like creating stuff. I, I consider myself a, some kind of content creator for a while now. And it's just like having a creative outlet is very important for me. And so like you, I definitely use the stream as an outlet to, to kind of use what I find to be strengths of mine. Um, and trying to create things that I find fun and interesting to to make and i definitely definitely tried to, to use that as much as possible um and that's that's definitely something that i <laughs> it's I, I joke about because like a lot of times like when you watch streamers like you you find them to have very charismatic personalities and stuff and sometimes like i feel like i don't i could make up some of the the what i lack in charisma with maybe some video shenanigans yeah cool um Let's see. Stealth also asks with being uh, with Twitch being a creative outlet and having over half a year under your belt, how has Twitch influenced other personal projects and work that you do? Um, I guess I kind of answered that with um, with what I was talking about. I, I would like to maybe look into streaming a little bit more of my editing process and showing off mm -hmm. um, a little bit more about how I do that. Um, but what about you? Have you ever thought about like streaming your editing process and showing off anything with that. Yeah, because it's one of those things like we talked about with with video games. A lot of times, for me, streaming streaming them has helped me um, complete them and stuff. And a lot of times, like I get in these creative ruts, and it's like if you know maybe taking a more communal aspect of it, or even just like sharing that process with somebody else can kind of spark some things. And so I've definitely thought about doing kind of creative stuff like that i know that 
working on stuff for Twitch, like I have to, to try and, and be fast. So it's, it definitely tried to um, improve the speed of some some of the things that I do in order to, to kind of keep up with the the stuff that the timeline that Twitch has. Um, so that's kind of affected other projects and stuff for me, uh, for sure. Cool. Um, and then Stealth also asks, <laughs> you're a bit of a community man. Uh, out of all the streams you enjoy, what content do you wish you saw more of on Twitch? I like this question. Mm -hmm. I want you to go first. <laughs> I was hoping you would go first. Uh, um, well, I, I wish that there would be more creative uh, uh, streams on Twitch. Um, I, I really wish that there would be more photography stuff there there is a photography section on twitch and it's like very rarely used which i know that they're they're changing up the communities here pretty soon mm -hmm. um but other outside of the creative uh areas like going more towards games i wish that there would um just be more people playing well more variety streamers like i <laughs> I don't have anything against people that play Fortnite or PUBG or anything <laughs> like that, but I I just don't care about watching those things. Um, uh, other than like maybe five minutes here and there, but yeah, I just wish people were playing more like story based games. And I love I I personally love watching someone experience a game for the first time and seeing their reactions and everything like that. So that's uh, that's what I want more of. Yeah, I I agree. I think I think blind playthroughs are very enjoyable to watch. But I feel like I feel like there is this stigma to 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 almost not play stuff because it's not current. Um, so like seeing seeing more stuff. I, I mean, people play do play a lot of retro stuff and other things. But I mean, there's a lot of games that I am very interested in, and I would like to watch. You just got. I kind of wish like there was at some point one person playing almost every single game that you would want to watch you know yeah. kind of thing like um but i definitely do like more community interactive stuff you know like um it's funny because i think we've recently found that uh marvel's on stream game where like you kind of you just a very easy chat integration into a game that where you don't really do much but it's 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 kind of exciting to kind of see the results on screen um I think it would be interesting to have, and I, I think Dead Cells has like the Twitch integration, integration yeah. kind of thing. Um, uh, Vermintide too has Twitch integration, and so a lot of times though, the, the Twitch integration is literally just kind of help or hurt the streamer. Mm -hmm. I think it would be cool to see some stuff that was maybe a little bit more dynamic or a little bit more than just a two dimensional. Here's something good, or here's something bad you know um, yeah there was a game uh man i can't remember what it was it was like a um i feel like it was one of the telltale games that had mm -hmm. twitch integration um where people could like uh chat could like uh help you decide what answers or, or what decisions to make um i don't remember which one that one was and i'm not even positive it was a telltale game but it was one that was similar to Telltale, if not Telltale. Um, but yeah, that's a really good answer is to have more Twitch integration or, or just streaming integration in general. Um, yeah. That would be really cool. And just uh, being able to um, uh, interact with the community more. Yeah, and especially around something story-wise. Because I think it's easy to do like, you know, Jackbox Party or these other community things. But something that's like a more... Because I, I don't know when i play certain like when i played soma or like other games it, it's like it feels like i don't know if you ever did this back in college or high school or even earlier like where like you have a couple friends on the couch and like you play a game and then you pass the controller or something like that like that kind of like kind of more intimate experience of just playing games with your friends is something that i feel like twitch integration could try to kind of amp up a little bit uh, maybe i don't know i think it's just it's something i think that's worth exploring and it seems like a lot of developers are exploring with that because we've seen a few more integration games recently yeah yeah absolutely good answer um man i think that's about it um i can't think of anything else any other things that you wanted to talk about or bring up 
I just want to um, say thanks. This is a lot of fun. I I don't know. Yeah. I like I like the people that uh, we have like some I think some overlap with some people and stuff and I think it's it's cool to to have you know kind of hang out and talk about games and stuff. So Yeah, well I appreciate it, it. it's been a pleasure, Jimbo. Um I really appreciate you coming on and talking with me. I have greatly enjoyed it. Um thank you to everybody who came out today. Um I guess, uh, do you want to, I, I normally just kind of end with um, talking about what is coming up on your channel, what you're playing, and what's coming up for you. Okay, yeah, um, I think I'm going to try to play a little bit more of We Happy Few, I think, and then um, I actually really would like to get into Octopath Traveler next, I think, which is a little really? bit of a departure. Yeah. Nice. Um, but I I don't know, I, I really want to try and explore I don't know. I've just I've been watching uh, some some people play some some turn based classic JRPGs, and I haven't played a JRPG in a really while, a long while. And I think uh, it would be it would be kind of interesting to to play one. So, Persona Five. Yes, I know Persona is <laughs> in there too. Lost Odyssey. I yeah. <laughs> How long is Lost Odyssey? Is it like really long, like JRPG long? It depends. Yeah, I mean, I think the first time I played was about 72 hours, I think. I 72 hours, but, okay. Yeah. Um. Awesome. So, yeah, everybody, uh, if you aren't already following Jimbo, I'm pretty sure most of you guys are, but go check him out for sure. Um, let me put your thing in. I need to get, like, a fancy thing like you have and uh, have a, a shout-out thing. Mm. I'll just... Uh, Spam your channel or spam your thing in <laughs> chat here. There you go. Go follow Jimbo if you aren't already. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I am going to be playing more Final Fantasy X. Um, I'd love to play more We Happy Few. I would really love to play more Death's Gambit. Um, mm -hmm. Man, there's so many good games coming out. Spider-Man's coming up soon. Uh, Phantom Doctrine. Um... I don't know. I, I want to play all play these games. Phantom Doctrine on scene, screen or stream soon. I will probably at least uh, check it out. Um, I don't know if I will have time to play it all because it's like a really long campaign. Okay. It sounds like. Yeah. yeah. Um, I want to play another XCOM two playthrough, but that's like a seventy hour game too. So <laughs> there's just so much stuff, but. Um, yeah, anyway, just, uh, uh, follow Jimbo for when he's going live. I think you stream what, uh, Thursdays through Mondays. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, it's 3, 3 PM central. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, I think that's going to do it for us. Jimbo, thank you so much for thank coming you. out and chat. Thank you all for hanging out with me next week. We're going to have a very special guest, uh, Mitsunitu is going to be joining me to talk about uh, probably Monster Hunter World. <laughs> um, so I usually end with saying God bless and happy gaming, and we'll see you next week. All right. Bye, guys.